We are back in Norman, the two-time defending national champions getting set to take this field. Winners of 47 straight, set to take on the Clemson Tigers. Oklahoma will be the visiting team, Clemson the home team, and it will be the sophomore in the circle to start for Clemson, and that's Brooke McCubbin. Now McCubbin getting the start in this pivotal game here for Clemson this season, and she's somebody that really mixes a wide variety of pitches. She can work all four quadrants of the strike zone, throws with some pretty good velocity too, mid-60s, does have an off-speed pitch. I'm interested to see what part of the zone she decides to work in. She's got a screwball, a rise ball that she can throw up in the zone, or are we going to see more drop balls down in the zone to get some ground ball outs against the Sooners? We talked to John Rittman a few moments ago, all hands on deck as you can imagine for Clemson in the circle as Valerie Cagle their ace will start the game at first base here is a look at the Oklahoma starting lineup presented by Capital One Kinsey Hansen has moved up to the cleanup spot behind Haley Lee Haley Lee with that grand slam yesterday you could just feel it in that inning all of a sudden the momentum shifting back over to the Sooners and she came through with the big swing on a 3-1 count to put the Sooners up big we are ready elimination game for Clemson an Oklahoma win sends them to Hall of Fame Stadium and the first pitch from McCubbin is in there for strike one 77 degrees humidity building here in Norman at first pitch but expecting dry weather throughout the afternoon Coleman great table setter the big 12 player of the year at 424 on the season One and one to Coleman, who is two for four with a couple of runs scored in game one yesterday. Eight runs scored in the NCAA tournament. The one one. Swung on and hit deep to center field. This is back and this is gone. And that's how Oklahoma starts game two. It's something we've seen from the Sooners all season long. They are aggressive early in the count. If you throw them something that they're looking for, McCubbin comes in with a curveball inside that doesn't break enough. And Jada Coleman just mashes this one straight to dead center to put the Sooners up 1-0 in the top of the first inning. 16th home run of the season. She is a table setter. She is a table clearer. <laughs> she can do it all. And you know how good she's been in the postseason. Five home runs, 15 runs batted in in last year's Women's College World Series. May and June is the time for Jada Coleman to shine. And there's the curtain call. One on the count to Tiare Jennings, team leader at 438 on the season. Tied for the team lead with 58 runs batted in. Excellent in the postseason, 7 for 13 in the NCAAs. McCubbin pulls the string, and it's now 1 and 2. Yeah, I think if you're McCubbin here, you just got to continue to mix the speeds and mix locations. You cannot let Oklahoma get too comfortable up at the plate because we've already seen the damage that they can do when they get a swing off on a pitch that they're looking for. Well, McCubbin pitched yesterday through one inning, didn't give up a hit or a run or a walk, struck out one for the Tigers. And that is line just wide of third. There's Valerie Cagle. Now, take me through perhaps the thought process for John Rittman here. He did tell us before the game, all hands on deck, everyone expect them to pitch, but no start for Valerie Cagle here, there is. You know, I was a bit surprised about that because I thought that we would see Valerie Cagle back into the circle just because of how tight that game was really through the first four innings of the ball game. This one is lifted deep to right field and is carrying and it is out of here. Jennings, Coleman, back to back. Two nothing Sooners. The power that you see top to bottom in this Oklahoma order is no joke. And you are seeing that for the first two batters of this ball game. This pitch is outside, breaking away from Tiara Jennings. And she does such a good job with her lower half to get the extension on this curveball away, driving it the opposite field 
for another solo shot. Back-to-back -back home runs for Oklahoma to start off this ball game. Home run number 15 for Jennings. Yes, show it with pride. <laughs> Already two home run balls here in Norman. John Rittman went out to the circle to talk to his young pitcher, trying to settle things down here. Two hits, both for home runs. Oklahoma now with 109 home runs this season. 15 in the NCAA tournament. Five on Friday. 45% of their runs have been scored Amazing. via the home run this season. And that was the 10th time this season that the Sooners have gone back to back with home runs. And now who steps to the plate, but someone who had a tape measure shot yesterday for <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> Haley Lee, five runs batted in yesterday, seven for 10 in the postseason. This is sky high to left. Miklish drifting to her left, and there is the first out of the first inning. You know, Eric, we were talking about the strategy of starting Brooke McCubbin in this ball game, and I think it was to try to keep the ball in the yard. The first 70 innings that she's pitched this season, she's only given up three home runs the entire year. She has now given up two home runs to the first three batters that she has faced for the Sooners. That's a great point. Clemson staff's been excellent keeping the ball in the park, led by Cagle, the staff ace. But with those two home runs, Clemson is now giving up 20 home runs in the season, which isn't a high number, but they're playing Oklahoma, who's gone deep time and again here in this regional. Five homers in this super for the Sooners. And here's Kinsey Hansen, senior catcher, with 11 home runs on the season. Bats with the bases empty and one down here in the first. McCubbin comes inside, ahead in the count 0-2. So important here for McCubbin and Clemson just to keep it is where it is right now. Just keep it manageable because this Clemson team felt like they had opportunities. They left nine on base yesterday. They had eight hits against Oklahoma pitching that they can string things together, but you can't let Oklahoma be spotted a big lead before you even come to the plate. Well, and you can't defend the home run balls either. Cannot. So you've got to do whatever you can to just get the ball on the ground, whether it's working low in the zone, working a lot of off-speed pitches. You've got to try to change up your game plan a little bit to get some ground balls. You see Nicole May, she will be the starter for Oklahoma here today, another one of their aces, and just trying to play cheerleader here because she'd love to step into the circle with a big lead here with a spot in Oklahoma City on the line. In on the hands, back behind. Shortstop, that's going to drop in. So Hansen fell behind in the count 0-2, but she muscles out her eighth hit of the NCAA tournament. She's now 8 for 11 in the NCAAs. You could even see her through that at bat, too, talking about some of the adjustments that she wanted to make on the pitches. Doesn't get all of that, but because the outfield was playing so deep to respect the power that she has up at the plate, she's able to drop that one right in front of Allie Miklish. Now, Allie Miklish is maybe three strides in front of the warning track and left, <laughs> perhaps four as she just took a half step in as Brito will go down and talk to Patty Gasso here. Got to make sure they're on the same page here. I think she might have gone up there without her signal card. <laughs> hard, to, hard to know the signs when that thing's in the dugout. She's got them now. We're all, we're all good to go. A little bit of an embarrassing shake of the head. <laughs> Patty Gasso is like, been there, done hey, that. It happens. It happens. Patty's like, you want to know embarrassing? I just had 2,000 people say <laughs> happy birthday to me before first pitch. <laughs> Her I would face just like, was redder than the Oklahoma I think colors. That Alyssa Brito was just so locked in to the hitting <laughs> game plan that she forgot the signal cards. Well, Brito has been locked in six for 12 with three home runs in the NCAA tournament. Take strike one. Where's Brito going to go at the plate? 
Well, when she's facing drop balls, look at the way that she's able to hit the ball to the opposite field. Yes, part of that is because she's getting pitched outside, but also it's her barrel angle and her ability to keep her hands inside of those low pitches. This is blooped out. Great diving effort by Logaleo. Couldn't get it. They go for the force at second, and that's in time. I think we will have a challenge here. I think Patty Gasso's looking for a little feedback from Kinsey Hansen at second base. Should I use one of my two challenge here challenges here for video review? And the answer is we will not. Hansen with some honest feedback to her head coach and two down. Let's take another look at it here. A great effort by Aaliyah Logaleo over at shortstop, having to run a long way for this one. It ricochets off her glove, but look at how Reedy Davenport was there to pick up that ball after it hits off of the glove. Hansen trying to read that one. Ooh. Ooh. I think she might have sold herself a bit short on that one. That was really close over at second base. So two down for Sanders, who takes strike one. Sydney had one of the big hits yesterday, like Oklahoma going two run home run. Her third home run of the NCAA tournament. That two run shot came in the fourth inning against Valerie Cagle yesterday, gave Oklahoma a 4 0 lead, but then in the top half of the fifth inning is when Clemson scored a couple of runs as Maddie took you through just a few moments ago with the Jacobson two run double. So it was a 4 2 game in the bottom of the fifth, but then the Sooners went to work, and they are still working here in the first inning. Sanders one hop off the wall. Brito being waved around. Here comes the throw. It's a good one, and it's in time. Brito stands up and she wants Gasso to challenge it and the head coach will. So we will have video review here. Brito thought she slid in safely and I must say she's pretty adamant about feeling she was safe. Taking a look at it here. Uh, I, oh, I think she's out. Yep. I think that's a good tag right there. I can see what she's saying about reaching across with that right hand thinking that maybe it touched the plate before the tag was applied. But I think that Abby Vieira gets her right there on the back leg before that hand reaches home plate. Yeah, that's a great job by Abby Vieira. Great throw by Logaleo. So they will use the challenge. Each team has two challenges and then the umpires can initiate the challenges starting in the sixth inning, and it's being reviewed in Pittsburgh at the replay center. Now, did Brito run through Patty Gasso putting up a stop sign here? That is one question. I think she was sending her. Yeah. Trying to be aggressive in the first inning, capitalize on that ball out to the outfield. And you could see Alyssa Brito even talking to Coach Gasso, too, about how she thought she reached that right hand into the plate before the tag was applied. It's really close, but I think that Vieira gets her right there just before that hand touches the plate. So the review is complete. And the call is upheld. Brito and Lions can't believe it. Well, great job by Clemson. We talked about it. Keep it right there but back-to-back -back checks to get Oklahoma going here in the first. This is how the Sooners set the tone. Jada Coleman, first at-bat of the ball game, goes yard, followed up by Tiare Jennings. Back-to-back -back solo shots put Oklahoma up 2-0. Ready for the home half of the first inning, and Oklahoma will send Nicole May to the circle to start here this afternoon. The junior getting the start, and she really throws a wide variety of pitches. She's got a bunch of different moving pitches that she can throw at this offense. And it's interesting when you look at her heat maps and where she likes to locate the ball, it is all over the place, all over the zone, inside the zone, outside of the zone. But it's her ability to work all four quadrants of the strike zone, but also the way that she attacks the zone too. Only 27 walks on the entire season, and she's got a very effective off speed that she will throw in any count.
opponents hitting 152 against May. And here is the Clemson starting lineup presented by Capital One with Clark, McLish, Cagle at the top of the lineup. And Jacobson was the run producer yesterday. Well, we talked about it was going to come down to the timely piece of hitting with runners in scoring position. And yesterday for Clemson, it was Caroline Jacobson. Line shot by Clark into foul ground for strike one. Clark was 0 for 3 yesterday, was hit by a pitch. Fourth time she's been hit by a pitch in the NCAA tournament. Tries to get on base anyway, anyhow. Down on the count, 0 and 2. Mays made two appearances so far in the NCAA tournament. Her last start was against Hofstra here in the Norman Regional when four didn't give up a hit. Didn't issue a walk and struck out five. Clark to third. Brito on the Sanders one away. Two errors yesterday for Oklahoma in the field. How rare is that? It was just the fourth time all year they've had more than one error in a game. They just do not hurt themselves. Patty Gasso talked about it not being Oklahoma softball yesterday because even plays that were scored hits they usually make and they weren't making them yesterday and that's when we talk about Clemson having opportunities against this Oklahoma team because the Sooners were close to perfect but by their high standards they were far from perfect yesterday and as you mentioned it doesn't happen very often so then when it does happen you need to be able to capitalize and Caroline Jacobson came through with that timely piece of hitting but as we've mentioned there were several other opportunities throughout that ball game for Clemson to get runs up on the board I thought it was interesting too when, when you look at Oklahoma in this entire year everybody always asks what is it that makes them so good and I think it's consistently they have all three facets of the game working for them it, within one game whether it's pitching offense defense typically all three are on but yesterday the defense might not have been up to par but the pitching and the offense was outstanding McLish to second Jennings to first two down their fielding percentage, Maddie, yesterday fell like a rock. It went down one thousandth of a point to <laughs> 988 from 989, which is number one in the country. The light rock. That's not, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is not the only number that is tops in the country. Yeah, they lead just in so many statistical categories, offensively, defensively, pitching that ERA leading the country as well. We're seeing an example of that pitching staff right here with Nicole May getting the start in this big game. They got bad here going up against Valerie Cagle, one of the finalists for USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year. And certainly helped seal her winning of that award by getting three hits here yesterday in her first three at-bats against Oklahoma. One on one. Yeah, we even talked to Valerie Cagle before the Super Regional, just talking to her about where pitchers like to throw her and yesterday we saw Jordy Ball really attack the outside part of the plate against Cagle and she was able to capitalize for those three hits working her down here and talking to Valerie it sounds like that's where she wants to be pitched to she loves that outside pitch but she's getting nothing of that right now from May well I think she's got a very powerful swing to the pull side too we've seen her throughout her career hit some monster shots over the right field wall but the extension on the outside part of the plate as we see Jordy Ball in that Sooner dugout cheering on Nicole May who gets the strikeout that's hard to do as Cagle is retired one two three inning for Nicole May a huge first strikeout of the ball game for Nicole May going up against Valerie Cagle pulling the string. Look at this movement striking her out. Oklahoma still up 2 nothing. Some terrific memories in the 25 years that Oklahoma has been playing at this field. They hope this day ends with a similar scene to that taking off the panel in the outfield and bringing it to home plate and the alums are checking in what could be the final NCAA tournament game played here at Marita Hines Field as they get ready to move to Love's Field next year. Now we saw Kehlani Ricketts in attendance yesterday. Lauren Chamberlain sending her love over here. Nicole Mendez, another fantastic Oklahoma Sooner, two-time World Series champion. Jocelyn Allo, D-Run career home run leader, of course. 
And the alums checking in in left field here as they normally do here in Norman. Speaking of the home run queen, there's Jocelyn Allo herself out there, Kaylani Ricketts. It's a great view of the field out beyond left well, field I mean, too. They've got softball royalty here, so yes. you do want to have one of the best seats in the house. They've worked for that. They've earned it. They should get it as <laughs> Jocelyn Erickson steps in to lead things off here in the second for the Sooners. I feel like you got to have your head on a swivel out there, though, the way that the balls are leaving the yard today. <laughs> so Erickson gets the start today, came in as a pinch hitter yesterday, was 0 for 1 at the plate, 2 for 7 in the tournament. And the 1-1 one, one from McCubbin. 1 and 2. Erickson at 365 on the season. Freshman from Phoenix. McCubbin gets the strikeout for the first out of the second inning. I like the location of that last pitch too. And we talked about how she's going to need to work the ball down in the zone. Goes with it there for strike three, diving down in the zone, but also away from Erickson. Really tight spin on that one. It's a good looking pitch for her first strikeout this afternoon. Grace Lyons batting eighth, way out in front for strike one. Lyons, fifth year senior captain for this Oklahoma team. 0 for 3 yesterday. A couple of hits, including a home run in the NCAA tournament. 101. Two and one to Lions with one down here in the second. Back-to-back -back home runs in the first for Oklahoma. Again, in game two of the Super Regional, the host team, the visiting team. So the Sooners batting here in the top half of inning two. There's a strike, and it's two and two. Clemson's been in this position before. We saw it in person last week. They lost to Auburn in game six of the Clemson Regional. So they faced elimination in game seven, pulled that went out to get here to Norman and this Super Regional. Swung on, foul tip, held on to by the era. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for McCubbin, two down. It's a good way to reestablish the tone, too, and you see her working a lot more off-speed pitches. You can see Grace Lyons way out in front on this swing. It's got so much rotation on it that it's hard to pick up out of the hand that it's actually an off-speed pitch. By the time you pick it up, you've already gotten your swing off, and it's too late. McCubbin not a strikeout pitcher, 37 strikeouts and 70 innings of work coming into the game here today, but back-to-back -back strikeouts, and here's Riley Boone. We can talk all we want about the home runs, three yesterday and now 109 on the season, but it was probably, what would you say, a 35-foot hit that started Oklahoma in that fifth inning yesterday, and it was that bunt by Riley Boone. And I think it only rolled the 35 feet because Valerie Cagle was hoping that it was gonna <laughs> roll foul, so she let it roll down that first baseline. But it was amazing just how quickly that game completely shifted. And it was the bunt that Riley Boone dropped down on the first pitch. Jada Coleman only saw two pitches after that for a base hit, Tiare Jennings going after the first pitch. And then on a 3-1 count, the grand slam by Haley Lee. Popped up. Maddie Moore at second has it. One, two, three inning for McCubbin in the circle for Clemson. We played one and a half here in Norman. Two nothing Sooners. John Rittman, who has built this Clemson program from scratch, now in his fourth season, second straight Super Regional appearance. They were in Stillwater last year. They're in Norman this year. And it's a special meeting this year because John's wife, Lori, is in the building. She wasn't able to be here yesterday because she was at a wedding for their niece in San Francisco. She took the red eye to be here, and she knew how to get here because Lori Rittman Fawcett is an alum of Oklahoma. Yes, Oklahoma pitcher from 1986 to 1989. She did tell us that the wedding was a little bit chilly yesterday in San Francisco, <laughs> so it feels nice being here in Norman, Oklahoma, but it was great to see her 
I've known the Fawcett family for a very long time. I actually played travel ball for Lori's dad and Lori's brother, Dean and Gary Fawcett, in my years growing up in California. And you can tell by the colors, but we, you know, we are professionals. We had to ask any risk of divided loyalties here, and John told us absolutely not. <laughs> he told us she was going to be showing up in everything Clemson, so <laughs> that's exactly what we're seeing. Caroline Jacobson leading off here in the second inning for the Tigers. Against Nicole May, who had a 1-2-3 first inning. 2-0 the count to Jacobson. Jacobson's been an excellent run producer, batting behind Cagle in this Clemson order. Six hits in the NCAA tournament, nine runs batted in, including those two runs batted in yesterday. Two and one. Cole May, first team all-conference selection in the Big 12 this year. Two and two, 15 and 0 in the regular season in 15 games started. Three postseason wins in total for the Big 12 tournament champions. Season ago, she was 15 and one. That's out of play. We'll do the 2-2 again. Nicole seems to get some starts and some really big games for Oklahoma this year. Got the start in that Big 12 championship game against Texas just a few weeks ago. The co Coach Patty Gasso just says she has so much confidence in, in the growth that she's seen from Nicole May as a pitcher. This season, you've seen the growth in her numbers too, but it's just her ability to throw a wide variety of looks at these batters, keep them off balance. Line shot, just foul. And that's really what this Oklahoma staff is. They have a variety of looks. We saw Jordy Ball get the start yesterday. Alex Storacco, second team all-conference selection, came in yesterday. Of course, Ball, Big 12 pitcher of the year for the second straight year. Kirsten Deal, freshman, who's tried to find some innings when she's gotten in the circle, especially in recent weeks. She's looked terrific. Left-hander, too, a different look than what you see from the rest of this Oklahoma pitching staff. Battles back, fell behind 2-0, oh, gets the strikeout. Strikeout number two for May, one down here in the second. Women's College World Series returning to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, noon Eastern time, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2023 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Like softball fans everywhere, we've been watching games in person and then heading back and watching games into the wee hours of the morning, it seems. <laughs> Trying to stay on top of everything. I Maddie. can't turn it off. I, I can't I can't turn it off. I gotta keep it on. Maddie will be in the studio yes. during yes. our coverage here on ESPN. So many good games too. All the glow sticks out in Salt Lake City <laughs> yes. at Utah too. That was quite the scene, but it how felt about like I needed some. Yeah, San Diego San State. San Diego State yeah. getting their first ever win in the Supers. There's a strike to Logo Leo. Batting with one out here. We had some concerns how she would be feeling. So we asked John Rittman after she was hit by a pitch right on the kneecap it looked like yesterday. <laughs> John shook his head, oh no, she's, she's too tough to keep her out of the lineup. No <laughs> shot. It definitely looked like it did not feel good, mm -hmm. but good to see Logo Leo back out here. It just got her right on the inside of that right knee it looked like. Jordy ball drop ball that just slipped out of her hand, got inside a bit too much, and hits her straight on the knee. Not quite as enthusiastic running down the baseline as Mackenzie Clark was when she got hit by a pitch yesterday. Mackenzie Clark just seems to like being hit by a pitch. That's fouled off by Logaleo. Do the one-two again. Now the question today is, will all the tickets to Oklahoma City be punched? Could happen here today, or will we have any game threes tomorrow? Northwestern and San Diego State and Washington and Tennessee, along with Oklahoma, all the teams trying to join Stanford, Oklahoma State, and Florida State in Oklahoma City. That's out of play. Stanford winning today, breakfast with the Cardinal. <laughs> 
<laughs> and with the Blue Devils, 9 a.m. Eastern time because of weather, 6 o'clock Pacific time, no problem. Stanford gets the win, their first Women's College World Series trip since 2004 when they were playing for a head coach by the name of John Rittman. <laughs> And you want to know who was the catcher on that 2004 team? It was Jessica Allister, who is the head coach now of Stanford. Exciting for them to be able to make their way back to Oklahoma City. Two and two to count now to Logaleo. I did think it was interesting, too. They asked Coach Allister about what she needed to do to get her team fired up at what would be 6 a.m. Pacific time for that ball game. And she said, oh, I didn't have to do anything. They were already ready to go. They were fired up because they knew exactly what was at stake <laughs> in that ball game. That is lofted out of play again by Logaleo, who's battling here with May with one down in the second inning. You win, you win. This was quite the scene. There's Home Run Village. That's beyond left field. Those are the folks watching on TV, and they're close enough where they can make some noise that you can hear it. Just give you an idea of the popularity and the support they get here in Norman. And these fans rewarded time and again with great softball. And right now, Logaleo making May work. It's a great at bat here. You've seen Nicole May really run through every single pitch that she throws. That last one being an off speed pitch, low and outside. Logaleo just throwing her bat out there, fouling it down the left side, trying to fight it off see another pitch, maybe get something she can get more barrel on. Ninth pitch of the at-bats for the junior from Nashville. Tap to third. Brito waits on it, shows off the arm, and gets the out, two down. Goes back with that same off-speed pitch, low and outside. Logaleo trying to fight it off again, but it gets too much of it, hits it out into fair territory and a ground ball out over there to Alyssa Brito. I'll bring up sophomore second baseman Maddie Moore. Moore hitting a 265 on the season with 10 home runs. Five of her 36 RBI coming in the NCAA tournament. She takes strike one. Strike two. We'll do the O2 again. Oklahoma's staff earn run average point eighty eight. May's earned run average, 0.57. <laughs> the numbers have just been insane. And again, you mentioned it, the staff. It's everybody working together. It's Nicole May, it's Jordy Ball, who we saw yesterday, Alex Storocco, Kirsten Deal, all of them working together throughout the season to get that ERA, ERA almost non-existent. And they all throw different pitches, too, which I think is another reason why it's so difficult for opponents to prepare to play Oklahoma, because you've got Nicole May that has a wide variety of pitches. You've got Alex Storocco that throws the ball up in the zone. Jordy Ball down in the zone. Kirsten Deal, a lefty. Everybody's a little different. And for opposing opponents, you have to try to prep for all four. And because they're all so good, that helps take the pressure off the next pitcher who's stepping out you know it, it's not all on one person's shoulders it's a shared responsibility a true staff and the offense too because you know your offense can put up 10 12 15 14, runs. 16 <laughs> <laughs> keep going if you want that's out of play i think it gives that that powerful offense gives the pitchers the freedom to not have to go out there and feel like they have to strike everybody out and plus, the, the fantastic defense behind them as well helps with that. But they don't have to overpower their pitches. They can truly just trust in the spin, trust in the location, because they know the offense has their back. Maddie Moore works the count full. Yeah, 
Clemson fans hoping their team could pull a monumental upset and force a game three winner take all here tomorrow. May gets the strikeout. That's her third, the third of first to finish it off, and that retires the side. Nicole May just dealing out there in the circle for the Oklahoma Sooners, working this off-speed pitch. So much downward bite. Clemson hasn't been able to figure it out. Three strikeouts already for Nicole May. We are about 30 minutes down the road from Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. Women's College World Series starting Thursday. Florida State, Oklahoma State, Stanford. Three of the eight teams that are in for OKC. Will Oklahoma join them? A win today would put the Sooners back in the Women's College World Series and give them their 48th consecutive win, currently tied with Arizona for the NCAA record with 47 straight wins as Jada Coleman leads things off here in the third inning for the Sooners. Two and oh, the count to Coleman. McCubbin needs to be careful because this is what Coleman did leading off the game. Curveball inside and Jada Coleman just gets all of this pitch. It's really been phenomenal to watch Jada Coleman's growth throughout her career, especially the jump in the power numbers that you've seen from her. And it's pretty interesting too, Coach Patty Gasso told us that she was recruited as a slapper, but she's had such dedication in the weight room to get those power numbers up there. Eight home runs last season, already up to 15 home runs this season. You could see the power that she has to the opposite field as well. Not easy to do, but you've got to use your lower half, get good extension. And she's one of the best bad ball hitters that we see across the country. She's able to pick up pitches that are practically rolling on the ground and still manage to hit them out of the park. The 3-1. Called a strike, it's three and two. Coleman's home run, her 16th of the season, second of the NCAA tournament, making her 179th consecutive start here today. Three, two from McCubbin. Off speed, fly ball to the center fielder. Mackenzie Clark has it, one down. Looked like a similar location to the pitch that she hit out of the park in her first at bat, but a good job by Brooke McCubbin taking a little bit off of that pitch. You could see that Jada Coleman just slightly out in front, still a fairly deep fly ball out to center field, but an out nonetheless. Here's Jennings who followed Coleman's 16th home run with her 15th home run of the season in the first. Misses for ball one. Seen a lot more off-speed pitches after those back-to-back -back home runs to start the ball game. Might start to see Oklahoma looking to hit that changeup early in the count. 2-0. Oh. Swings at the 2-0 and fouls it off for strike one. Speaking of hitting balls, opposite field, Tiara Jennings gets a pitch outside and uses her lower body, her extension, to drive that thing out to the right center <laughs> or the right field stands. You can see home run village getting really excited about that one. Line shot right at Davenport, who handles it two down. I wonder if Home Run Village is hoping hoping that more balls get pulled to the left side so that they can get in on the home run catching what I like action about out home, there. What I like about Home Run Village is no matter where it goes, it could go to the part of the field that is the farthest away from Home Run Village. They're going to celebrate no matter yes. what. That is Party yes. Village out there <laughs> beyond left field. They were lined up early before today's ball game too, getting the prime seating out in the grass out there. Now, do you want to be closer to the front to have a chance to possibly catch a monster home run, or do you go more towards the back where maybe the food and the <laughs> bounce well, houses you, are located? Yeah, usually I, I, I judge my seat placement by the closest bathroom, but ah, that's just okay. me. Yeah. 
See, I'm still trying to make a play out there, so I'm thinking maybe <laughs> if I get as close as I can to the field. You are always about pre-pitch position. <laughs> yes. You, you retired long ago, but you just can't turn it off, can you? <laughs> nope, I cannot. Never going to be able to. One and one to lead. One and two. Lee flied out to McClesh in left. Her first time. Two and two. McCubbin hoping to make it back to back one, two, three innings. Popped it up, foul ground, and enough room for Cagle. Well done by Brooke McCubbin. One, two, three again for the Sooners here in the third. Quiet in Home Run Village. Good to see you all out there. Two nothing Oklahoma. All right, we take a look at the bracket. It continues to take shape. It could be completely filled by the end of play here today. Stanford this morning already knocked off Duke. So the Cardinal moving on to the Women's College World Series for the third time and the first time since John Rittman was their head coach back in 2004. Alabama and Northwestern later tonight. We'll talk more about that series coming up. But here's what's at stake in our series. Clemson has never won a Super Regional game, but this is only the second Super Regional they've ever played in. And Oklahoma hasn't lost a Super at home since 2014 when they lost to Madison Shipman's Tennessee Lady Vols. Oklahoma's won 47 in a row. That ties Arizona for the all-time record. A win today, it's their record alone, and they would be going on to Oklahoma City for a seventh straight time in what would be the final postseason game played here at Heinz Stadium, which has been around for 25 years. Loves Field opening for play in 2024. And there is Marita Hines, center of your screen. Got a chance to say hello to her. She big fan of Maddie Shipman's work <laughs> as an analyst. I'm like, whoa, you got someone who hired Patty Gasso here to take over this program, who was the head coach here. And we joked around because Patty told us that, well, we used to have to go play across the street at Reeves Park, pick up the garbage before our games or practices, then be off the field at 5 o'clock so the slow pitch league could take over. That's where this program was. It's a line shot and a base hit to start things here off the bat of Abby Vieira in the third inning for the Tigers. And now they're playing in front of a sellout crowd with an overflow crowd in left field and moving over to Love's Field. And Barry Switzer checking in play here at He won Oklahoma. a couple of national championships sure at Oklahoma, did. too. I believe it's three national championships. What did Maria tell us today, too, about the way things were back in the day when she took Patty Gasso around? She hired Patty, and That's Patty right. was yes. here for a job interview. And when did Marita say she took Patty around the facilities here to show her? Uh, she went to the football facilities. What did she do yes. before that? She took her here at oh, night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how low things were for Oklahoma softball, that Patty Gasso was drove, driven around here at night. Bombard will run for Vieira. And here is Jaden Ruskowski. Freshman getting a chance here today in the DP spot, 154 on the season. That's four for 26 at the plate, 0 for 2 in the NCAA tournament. There you see Julia Bombard pinch running. So the first base runner for Clemson comes here in the third inning. And it's 1-1. One one. Oh, we just saw... Coach Switzer and Oklahoma football checking in with their friends in the softball program. <laughs> and, and, and going back in time to show what's happened here before, but in football for Oklahoma. Big rip by Ruskowski, who's down the count one and two. Sooners like that number 47, don't they? <laughs> I think they'll like 48 even better. Yes. <laughs> Clemson on the season with 102 stolen bases, but you do not run on Oklahoma. Especially with the way that the defense is set up, too. With two strikes, you've got Sidney Sanders placed way back behind at first base. You've got the middles pinched up the middle as well. Nicole May throwing a couple of rise balls, too, and what that's going to do is stand up Kinsey Hansen back behind the plate when she goes to catch it, making it an easier throw down to second base. 
Strikeout number four for Nicole May. One down here in the third. Goes back with the rise ball. A couple of those in a row and some big swings by Jaden Ruskowski. Looked like she was trying to send a couple of those balls out to home run village. But the late movement, too, just a bit behind on the swing and a big strikeout for Nicole May with a runner on board. Reedy Davenport steps in with one down. Ball one to Davenport. Grad student plays third base. 298 on the season, six home runs, including one in the Clemson Regional. Line shot, base hit, second of the inning for the Tigers. They've got something going here in the third. Two on, one out. And this is something that we saw from Clemson yesterday. They were able to stack up several hits against Oklahoma, just being able to come through with the hit with runners in scoring position. But so far in this inning, a nice swing there by Reedy Davenport, timing up an off-speed pitch, and that's going to flip the lineup over as well, bringing up Mackenzie Clark. Good swing, outside pitch, just past the diving glove of Alyssa Brito right there. So time is called here as Hanson will go talk to May and Clark will go talk to John Rittman. When we talked to Mackenzie Clark before this series about playing Oklahoma, it was one of those pinch me moments because this is a great moment for her. And she said, I would really know I'm here in this moment playing for Clemson against Oklahoma. When I look up on my dad, Brian, that's when it's going to hit me. And now here she is in a huge spot. There is Brian standing in the top row as his daughter will step in here in a big moment for her Tigers. Takes ball one. Grounded to third in the first. Line shot just past John Rittman at third, one and one. Clark has been in the middle of this building from the ground up for Clemson in her fourth year with the Tigers. Was joking this week about how John Rittman was recruiting her, just driving her around campus where they did not have a stadium <laughs> or a field. Showing her a vision of what the stadium <laughs> could look like. And she has been one of the key pieces to paint that picture. One and two the count. I think the funniest part about that story too was Coach John Rittman was still learning his way around campus. So Mackenzie Clark joked that he had to make a couple of three point turns to turn around to, to get to what would be McWhorter Stadium. Their first season was 2020. Here they are taking on Oklahoma in the Super Regionals. Clark just getting a piece. Father and daughter. Hoping for a big moment here for the Tigers. Another one, two. You can see every pitch. She's just trying to get a bit more on time. And Nicole May throws a variety of different speeds. And she's somebody that really has adapted more of a toe tap with her stride, too. So that's something that we're seeing throughout this at bat, trying to get more and more spot on with her timing on her swing. Slapped, gloved by the second baseman. Double play! Jennings to Lions to retire the side. T.R.A. Jennings just perfectly positioned to rob a hit from Mackenzie Clark and then gets the double play to end the inning. Just as Clemson thought they had something going, the Sooners say, not today. It is a 2-0 game. Clemson hanging in there. Let's talk with their head coach. 
John Rittman, John, we just joked a moment ago when you put the headset on, game of inches, you must feel like you are just so close to breaking something open here against the number one team. Yeah, it was a great at bat, you know, just um, took us a little while to start getting some good at bats, and I thought we put some good at bats together that inning, obviously. Got to hit them where they ain't, but uh, that ball was hit so hard, our runner at second really didn't have time to get back. But I love the way we're fighting out here. Hey, Brooke McCubb, and I love her, man. Love everything about her. Um, she's just pitching her butt off right now, and and hopefully she can keep us close so we can get some more opportunities here. Yeah, and speaking of Brooke McCubb, and I was going to ask you, what have you seen that's been different in the last two innings compared to the first inning for her? Well, I think the first inning, I mean, you're facing two of the best hitters in the country, and she made a couple of pitches up in the zone, and they took advantage of it. And, and then she settled down a little bit. I think the big key is she's got her off speed going a little bit better and um, keeping them off balance. And uh, we still got a long ways to go. They're a great offensive team, but I love the way Brooks competing out there. You're fighting it, and you're in the game. Thanks, John. Appreciate you. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks. McCubbin has retired six in a row as she gets set to work to four, five, and six in the Oklahoma lineup here in the top half of the fourth inning. Two runs in the first. Back-to-back -back home runs from Coleman and Jennings, the only scoring so far in this game. Oklahoma, a win, and they go on to the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. If Clemson wins, we will have a deciding game three tomorrow here in Norman. Strike one to Hanson, who singled her last time. Hanson needs a moment here after she fouled it off herself. Really, when you go back to that first inning, I know there are the two home runs, Maddie, but for this team, and it starts with Vieira, who had that tag at the plate. Remember, Sanders had the double, and then Brito was thrown out the plate with Vieira making the tag. Since then, it's had a different feel in this game. I think you got the feeling, too, that that was a big play for Oklahoma just by them going to that video review. Alyssa Brito thought that she got that hand in on the plate before the tag was applied, but I thought that was a huge momentum swing. After those back-to-back -back home runs, all of a sudden the Sooners are starting to get into a groove off of Brooke McCubbin, and then you get that great defensive play, an awesome relay in from the outfield, a perfect throw by Aliyah Logaleo over to Abby Vieira to get that out and end the inning. Line shot right at Davenport. We've seen that happen a couple of times now. Jennings lined it out to Davenport, and now it's Hanson, one down. A lot of line drives that we're seeing from both sides in this ball game, too. We just saw Mackenzie Clark hit the line drive to Tiari Jennings to end the previous inning, and then the line drive over to Reedy Davenport to start off this inning. Here's Brito with one down in the fourth. Seven in a row retired by McCubbin. Ball one. Two and oh. This is the spot here in a hitter's count where you cannot just serve up a pitch over the heart of the plate. You've got to continue to work the corners at mixed speeds because you know that the Sooners are going to be even more aggressive in these good hitters counts. Case in point, Brito swinging at the 2-0, fouled it off. It's two and one. Three and one. McCubbin made 18 appearances last season as a freshman, had five wins, two losses. Earned an average of 232. 21 appearances this season. With an ERA of one. Swung on, hit well to center field. It is back, it is gone. Alyssa Brito has a homer. Third of the game for the Sooners, it's three nothing.
even in between pitches, you could see that Alyssa Brito is practicing getting the barrel underneath. And this is a curveball again, about belt high. She gets the high leg kick, utilizes her entire lower half to get the power into this pitch, driving it out to dead center. The second solo shot in this super regional by Alyssa Brito. And her fourth of the NCAA tournament. She is seven for 14 at the plate, four home runs, eight runs batted in. Three nothing. Such a good swing too. I know we talked about it yesterday, Eric, about how her swing just seems to be tailor-made for pitches low in the zone just by the way that she's able to drop the barrel underneath. And now it's not dropping back behind her hands or behind her body, but she's bringing her hands forward first and then being able to get the good, the sweet spot of the barrel underneath those moving pitches and that level of anticipation that comes with it too, anticipating where the ball's going to end up. Just continue to see her swing develop throughout her career and it's led to a big jump in those power numbers. Talked to Patty Gasso a little bit of, about it before this tournament. It's like kind of like a golf swing. She'd be a low handicap golfer probably if she isn't already <laughs> because that's how she can just deliver at the plate. Land how everything for the most part goes opposite field or right back up the middle. That's not something that's easy to do on pitches as a right handed batter that are moving down in the zone or moving down and inside but it's her ability to get the tip of that barrel basically pointed straight down to the dirt is what allows her to get so much power on those low pitches. Two and two to Sydney Sanders. Now we've seen the three home runs. We've seen the hard hit balls from Jennings and Hanson right to Davenport. Oklahoma's making some solid contact here. Couple of strikeouts for McCubbin. That's going to be out of play. I mean, <laughs> it sounds kind of silly sometimes because Oklahoma's hit three home runs, bullpen empty, but you would think the next pitcher in for Clemson is playing first base right now. <laughs> but for McCubbin, it's three solo home runs. It, it's that one comes inside and it hits Sanders, so she's aboard with one down. And I was just going to say, she's limiting the damage because she's not giving away yes. any free passes. And just as I was about to say it, she hits Sydney Sanders on that back knee. Let's take another look at it here. Almost on the thigh. A little bit higher. Well, it will not be Cagle who will be the next pitcher here. It's going to be Millie Thompson who has just stepped out of the dugout as John Rittman has gone to the circle. And a hug from... McCubbin to Thompson. McCubbin heads to the dugout. We'll tell you about the new pitcher next. 66 pitches for the sophomore Brooke McCubbin. She gave up three home runs as part of her five hits and just hit a batter. So John Ripman going to the bullpen and here is Millie Thompson. Going to see a different look from Millie Thompson. A lot of those lefty curveballs that she's going to throw to both sides of the plate. She'll spot them down in the zone as well. Going to bring it in the mid 60s, but it's the changeup that she will throw on any count that she's going to need to have command of early in this ball game. Thompson came on in relief of Cagle yesterday in the fifth inning after the Brito home run. So her second appearance of the Super. Ball one to Erickson. Erickson struck out against McCubbin in the second. Fourth appearance of the NCAA tournament for Thompson. Five and a third innings of work. Gave up a hit and a run in her inning of work yesterday. Sixteen pitches yesterday for Thompson. Hey! 
I don't know if he can hear it at home, but someone in that Clemson dugout can hold that last note of Millie really long. <laughs> <laughs> they can hold she it a lot longer now. than we would be able to. <laughs> She's got the right spot, though, right? Right next to that microphone. 2-1. Three and one. This is the danger zone when you're facing an Oklahoma team. Yeah, these 3-1 counts, it just seems like Oklahoma is all over these hitter leverage counts, knowing that the pitcher is going to try to bring a strike. Ball four, two on with one down here in the fourth for the Sooners. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball will be in Atlanta. The series finale between the Phillies and the Braves, who are in first place in the NL East. Coverage will start at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 o'clock Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. And Madison, in preparation for the Sunday Night game, has been checking out stats. Well, That's what like, she does. I do like to look <laughs> at the exit velocity, too. And the Atlanta Braves have a couple of batters that have had some of the hardest hit balls put in play this year. Ronald Acuna Jr. up there with one at 116.7 mile per hour exit velocity off of the bat. I'd imagine that we've seen some of the balls leave the yard that have some pretty high exit velocities off the bat here in Norman this weekend too. I, I do think if I could make one request to the softball world, because there's a couple of parks that do it, Madison would love the tail of the tape, distance of home runs and exit velocities. Yes, yes I would love to see it everywhere, every single park. That way we could analyze she might even the exit velocity. Whatever the software is, she might bankroll it out of her <laughs> own personal account because she loves it so much. <laughs> Quincy Lilio is running at second base, and there's a strike from Thompson to Grace Lyons. Lyons struck out in the second, 0 for 4 in the super. Good block by Vieira behind the plates. 101. We will chat with Patty Gasso on her birthday. Coming up after this half inning. One and two. Two and two. Lions a five-year starter for this Oklahoma team. Trying to go out with another win here in Norman. Make another trip to the Women's College World Series. Ground ball, foul ball. Played umpire's call, called it foul. Another hard hit ball the opposite way. That one very close down that first baseline. You can see just how far back the infielders are playing too. Valerie Cagle almost out in right field over in that first base position. Lions is hit by the pitch and the bases are loaded for the Sooners with one down here in the top of the fourth. Looks like it's right off of the elbow guard for Grace Lyons. And just as we were mentioning that Clemson's pitching had done a nice job so far in this game of limiting the free passes, three free passes in a row, the hit by pitch to Sidney Sanders, the walk to Jocelyn Erickson, and now that hit batter to Grace Lyons loads the bases. So a discussion in the circle. Patty Gasso will come over to talk to our plate umpire, Tracy Laycock. See if we'll get another pinch runner here for the Sooners or a pinch hitter here as Riley Boone, the number nine hitter, is due up. And we'll get a pinch hitter here to face the left-hander, Millie Thompson. 
Sophia Nugent will step in. I'd imagine Coach Gasso trying to work the righty-lefty matchup here with Boone being a lefty, bringing in the righty Nugent. She takes strike one. Sophomore one for two in the Norman Regional last weekend with a run scored. Checked her swing, it's one and one. Nugent 17 for 60 at the plate this season, seven home runs. Two and one. Cagle on the short hop. Tags the base, they need to get the tag at the plate, it's not in time, Lilio scores, and Oklahoma is on top four, nothing. A productive at bat by the pinch hitter, Sophia Nugent coming up, hitting this ground ball hard over to Valerie Cagle, who uses her momentum to go ahead and get the first out over at first base, and then on the throw back to Abby Vieira, throws it down into the ground. Good slide by Quincy Lilio to score on that ground ball over to first base. Top of the order, Jada Coleman. Takes ball one. And you threw a word out there, momentum. You think by Cagle, the way she was moving, that first base had to be her play instead of getting the force at the plate? You know, I'm still kind of surprised that we didn't see her turn around and throw the ball to home plate with that momentum even still going to first base. But I think that was her thought, was to make sure that you at least get one out on the play, and that was the sure out with that ground ball taking her down that first baseline. Two outs, two on for Coleman. Called a strike, it's two and one. Coleman had the leadoff home run in the first, flight out to center in the third. Off of Thompson, it's gonna go right to Cagle. And out at first will be Coleman. Coleman's running a second because Cagle rolled the ball, but the first base umpire is calling Coleman out, who was trying to avoid Cagle. Thompson took a hard shot. Hope she's okay. Patty Gasol looking for an explanation, but that will retire the side. Yeah, it looked like our first base umpire called Jada Coleman out for being outside of the base path. Trying to avoid that tag by Valerie Cagle. That will do it. A little discussion between the umpire and crew. And that will retire to the side. But two runs in the inning for the Sooners. And it started off the bat of Alyssa Burrito. Another solo shot for the Sooners. And they're up 4 nothing going into the bottom of the fourth inning. Uh, stretches their lead on top of Clemson 4 nothing, And talking now with Patty Gasso. Patty, uh, Maddie and I were going to sing you happy birthday. But 2,000 of your friends took care yeah, of it for you no, today. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me just about the mindset here today. I know you try not to get caught up in the emotion of it, perhaps being the last game here, and what's the, just keeping your team in the moment. How challenging is that sometimes? It's not right now. I mean, they are grinding, they are focused. This is a rough game. They know what's at stake. We're not thinking about anything else. Um, we'll deal with all of that when it's over. But um, that's one thing I think we've all learned is when you let emotions take over it's very distracting and right now we're in a good place so we're just trying to stay locked in and coach i want to ask you a little bit about the offense three solo shots what do you like of the swings that we've seen from brito jennings and coleman that you want to see from the rest of your offense aggressive i mean we we've got to 
pick a pitch here. I mean, there's different speeds coming at us. So we've got to figure out what we want and be sitting on it or be quick to it. But uh, they've done a good job of hitting balls hard at third baseman, making good plays. I mean, we're, we're having good contact and not, not needing to do much different, really. Thanks, Patty. We right. appreciate it so Thank much. Patty Gasso, the head coach in her 29th season here in Norman. So a couple of changes here for Oklahoma. I see Jocelyn Erickson moving over to first base. There's Erickson. Quincy Lilio will be out in right field. And Riley Boone re-enters into left field. Got it all covered. We're ready for the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two, three, and four here for the Tigers. Miklas Kegel, Jacobson. You know, Eric, we, I always like to joke that when you're the new defender out in the field, the ball's going to find you. So I'm wondering how quickly the ball's <laughs> going to find Quincy Lilio out there in right field for the Sooners. And I believe it was Big 12 tournament, too, when she got put out defensively in right field, ended up making a phenomenal diving grab over in foul territory. Your memory is good. That is correct. Up at Hall of Fame Stadium, there is Lilio and Wright. One to two here to Miklish. Popped up. Might be enough room here. And the basket catch by Brito so she doesn't run into that netting for the first out of the fourth inning. They'll bring up Valerie Cagle, and this is what happened facing Nicole May in her first at bat. Yeah, you know, when you're facing Valerie Cagle, you've got to work the off speed pitches, move them outside of the zone. She started her with the rise ball and then knew that she was getting swings and misses on that off speed drop ball low in the zone. So pounded three in a row and got that strikeout to Cagle in the first inning. Starts off with strike one. The ACC Player of the Year for a second time, leading the team in hitting home runs, runs batted in, three for four yesterday, 0 for one today. And you wonder maybe if Valerie Cagle was coming up to this at bat looking for that pitch down in the zone because she watched that first one for a screwball go right over the outside part of the plate for a strike. Popped up and out of play. May working ahead one and two. What will she throw to Cagle here with one down in the fourth? Fly ball to center. Coleman, two down. Decided to climb the ladder on that last pitch. Did not see anything with downward spin, downward movement in that entire at-bat to Cagle, whereas in the previous at-bat, that's what she struck out on. So that's all part of the pitching strategy going up against Cagle, trying to keep her constantly guessing, knowing that she's so good up at the plate, you almost have to think a pitch ahead of what she's looking for in certain at-bats. Caroline Jacobson struck out in the second. Ball one. One and one. Clemson had something going last inning. Lead off single by Vieira. Roskowski struck out, but then Davenport, the number nine hitter, had a base hit. First and second with one out for Clark. 
who hit it on the button. But Jennings grabbed the liner, tossed to Lyons at second for the double play to end the inning. Shot is a fair ball down the line. Jacobson around first. It gets away from Boone in left field, but Jacobson will hold at second with a two-out double. Similar double to the one that she hit back in the fourth inning of yesterday's ball game. Gets around a pitch and drives it straight down that third baseline. And you can see Alyssa Brito's actually playing back pretty much even with the bag, maybe a step back behind. And that ball's hit so hard it just gets past the diving glove of Brito for a stand-up double with two away. Here's Logaleo who grounded to third in the second. Strike one. Logaleo seven for 16 with a couple of home runs in the NCAA tournament. One on one. Valerie Cagle heads down to the bullpen to get some work in. We'll see if she comes on to pitch to Oklahoma in the fifth. We kind of wondered if that might be a strategy to try to roll out a bunch of different looks. Maybe one time, twice through the order, and then bring in Valerie Cagle. Logo Leo checked her swing. It's three and one. Take a look at it here. I think that's a good hold. Good check. Three and two. Ogaleo's had a couple of really long at-bats against Nicole May. Remember, she was fouling off a bunch of different pitches in her first at-bat in the second inning. Ended up hitting that ground ball to third base. And here she is in a 3-2 count after that foul ball. Look out in the Oklahoma dugout. Got the thumbs up and it look, looks like she's okay. <laughs> Maybe she's telling her teammates, I'm strategically behind I, this padding right here. <laughs> I know my angles. I'm okay right here. If I go out a couple of inches, then it's on me. And don't anybody push me. Another three, two coming from Nicole May. Ball four, Logo Leo works a walk with two down. Another nice at bat by Logo Leo. Just seeing a lot of different pitches from Nicole, making her work a lot in the circle. Watches that pitch, just barely missing outside for ball four. And again, Clemson with some people on board. Here's Maddie Moore who struck out to end the second her first time. Swings at the first pitch, pops it up, foul ground, and just out of play. Oh, no. Didn't Speaking we... of multitasking, he almost had that one. He kept we, the right hand on the camera, we talked too. To, we talked to Khalil before the game yesterday, yes. and we said, we know everything's going to be in focus, but there's going to come a moment where you have a chance to make a play. <laughs> <laughs> and that moment has come and gone, Khalil. <laughs> Yeah, the right priorities though. Camera first, keep well, the right hand on the camera, and then try to make the grab with the left hand. That's right. Well, how are you going to keep perfect focus with your <laughs> hand off the camera? 
Two on, two out here in the fourth. Clemson trying to cut into a four run Oklahoma lead. One and two. Let's see if the crowd gets a little louder here, trying to help Nicole May get her team to the dugout here in the fourth. Lift to the left, it's well struck, it is deep, and it is gone! Three run, home run, Maddie Moore, it's a one run game in Norman. You could just feel that Clemson was learning, seeing so many pitches in this inning off of Nicole May, and this is that off-speed pitch. It's outside, and Maddie Moore gets around it and drives it out over that left field wall. What a clutch, a timely piece of hitting, and Eric, we had talked about that all day yesterday. They had the opportunities, they had runners in scoring position, but it was just needing somebody to come through with the big hit, and in this ball game, it is Maddie Moore with the three-run shot over the left field wall. The door was ajar a handful of times the last two days, and Maddie Moore kicked it open. A one-two pitch with two down. And it's a one run game. Ball one to Abby Vieira. That is the first home run given up by Oklahoma's pitching staff in the NCAA tournament. And this is their fifth game of the tournament. Jordy Ball in the pen. Two and oh. The Tigers were trying to find their bats at the end of the season. Had just four hits in the ACC tournament. John Rittman admitted they were trying to figure things out offensively, but you look up and down the lineup, players have delivered here in the postseason. That's eight runs batted in now for Maddie Moore here in the postseason. Well, even look at the regional. They had seven home runs hit by six different batters in their order. So they're not just relying on one bat to get it done in the lineup, but truly top to bottom. They've got a bunch of different players that have come through in clutch moments. Vieira rolls it over to second. Jennings on the first to retire the side. But the Tigers putting up some fight and those wearing Clemson colors making some noise. That's what coach John Rittman wanted to see. He wanted to see his team compete. And how about Matty Moore coming through with the three run shot into left field and Oklahoma still leads it for three. Memorial Day weekend, just such a busy weekend. So much going on, multiple sports. And we've got a little something going on here in Norman, Oklahoma. It is a one run game. The Oklahoma Sooners who have won 47 in a row. They've won 63 in a row here at this field. They are in a one-run game as they bat here in the top half of the fifth inning against the Clemson Tigers. Clemson needs a win here today. It's an elimination game for them. If an Oklahoma win happens here today, they go on to Oklahoma City. This is well struck to the center fielder. Clark has it. Jennings is retired. One down here in the fifth. Couple of hard hit balls for Tiare too after that solo shot in the first inning. Line drive to Reedy Davenport over at third base in the third inning, third inning, and then that line drive out to Mackenzie Clark for the first out here in the fifth. Haley Lee, 0 for 2. Takes ball one. So, Maddie, if you're John Rittman, how do you play it with your pitching? You've got Millie Thompson in the circle right now. We saw Valerie Cagle putting some work in down at the bullpen. She's playing first base. As Thompson throws a strike, it's one and one If I'm going to put my coaching hat on, I would have been very tempted to go ahead and bring in <laughs> Valerie Cagle in this inning. But he talks to us about just how much confidence he has in his entire pitching staff and how they complement each other with what they throw. So maybe he's thinking if he can get Millie Thompson to get 
out of this inning in the top of the fifth, then you could bring in Valerie Cagle to close the door in the last two. Cagle threw 78 pitches in her four innings of work yesterday. I also think from a hitting perspective, the more you see Millie Thompson, her throwing the ball in the mid 60s, it's gonna make that 72 mile an hour drop ball look like it's coming in even hotter than it already is. Two and two, now the count to Haley Lee. Had the big hit yesterday, the grand slam that broke things open for Oklahoma. That was in the fifth inning. She bats here with one out in the fifth. Three and two. And remember yesterday, it was a response after Clemson had scored two runs to make it a 4-2 game. Oklahoma came to the plate in the bottom of the fifth, and Madison took you through it before. The Boone Bunt, Coleman single, Jennings infield single, Haley Lee grand slam, Alyssa Brito grand slam. Five runs scored on nine pitches. Nine pitches. In those nine pitches, majority of them coming from Haley Lee's at bat because she got to a 3-1 count when she hit that ball for a grand slam. Half swing to Cagle at first, two down here in the fifth. Good couple of quick outs for Millie Thompson too, and it's her ability to throw the change up in any count is why you're getting hesitant swings like we just saw from Haley Lee, trying to work on the timing, being on time for either that curve ball or that change up. Kinsey Hansel singled in the first, lined to third in the fourth. Eight for 12 in the NCAA tournament. Ball one. One and one. Thompson, the junior from Bedford, Virginia, third team all conference in the ACC for a second consecutive year. To Madison's point, talking about John Rettman having faith and trust in his staff. He loved the work, as he told us in our in game interview, that McCubbin did to get things going here today. Thompson trying to bridge things to Cagle and hoping the offense could come through and go in front of Oklahoma and force a game three. The pitchers on this Clemson staff are different in what they throw, but also their personalities that you see when they're out there on the field. Valerie Cagle, very stoic in her approach in the circle. Millie Thompson, very animated, very fiery out there. Popped up on the infield and now drifting out and making the catch is Maddie Mora. One, two, three inning for Thompson in the circle. Clemson batting in the fifth in a one run game. All right, Matt, thanks so much. Tennessee with that 5-2 win at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium in game one on Friday. With a win, they'll make it to the Women's College World Series for the first time since 2015. Tennessee number two in Division One behind Oklahoma and runs a game. This is a team that could score runs in bunches like Oklahoma. They've got a pitching staff that's been good. They're good in the field. Kiki Malloy is a dynamic superstar in the game. That's a loaded Tennessee team. Well, and how about the way that Zeta Pooney has been swinging the bat for the Lady Volunteers, too? It's not just Kiki Malloy in that offense, but having somebody like Pooney step up the way that she has. What is it, four home runs in her last five games? It's pretty impressive the way that she's been swinging the bat up at the plate recently. So again, as Matt said, top of the hour over on ABC, Texas and Tennessee with Beth Moens and that crew there. As Jaden Ruskowski, who struck out facing May in the third, leads off here in the fifth. We have a game here in Norman. The two-time defending national champions who had a 4-0 lead. It's now a one-run lead after Maddie Moore's three-run home run for the Tigers in the fourth. Left field, foul ground, long run for Boone who can't get there. One and two to Ruskowski. Ruskowski, Davenport, and then top of the order for Clark here in the home half of the fifth.
Two of Jaden's four hits this season, home runs. Two and two. We talked about the big hit by Matty Moore in that last inning to make this a one-run ball game, but I really think it's the pitching staff that stands out to me for Clemson and the job that they've done, both Brooke McCubbin and Millie Thompson, really have prevented the big inning. And after the momentum that these felt from the Sooners in that first inning, got the feeling it could get out of hand in a hurry. But because they were able to, for the most part, limit the free passes, limit the momentum that the Sooners love to build, I think that's why this game has continued to stay so close. And a big part of it, we talked about it in the first inning, that play at the plate where Logaleo threw to Vieira and Vieira tagged out Brito to end the inning. That was a big moment right there on the Sanders double. Just two runs in that first inning, two more in the fourth for Oklahoma. They had that four nothing lead. And here is a solid single up the middle by Roskowski to lead things off for Clemson in the fifth. Clemson has had a lot of success getting really deep into these counts. You think back to Aaliyah Logaleos, both of her at-bats, one that she ended up drawing the walk. And then there, Jaden Roskowski seeing a bunch of pitches, fouling some off, finally gets a rise ball that she knows she can get solid barrel on and drives it back up the middle for a leadoff single in the bottom of the fifth. Ansley Houston will run for Roskowski. And here's the number nine hitter, Davenport. Davenport is one for one against May. Six hits in the NCAA tournament, a home run of four runs batted in. Does Clemson play small ball here, or does Davenport swing away? Strike one. Sometimes coaches like to let their batters go up there and see a strike too, maybe if they want to be aggressive early in the count and then sometimes choose to go to more of the small ball to move that runner over into scoring position. Here's the bunt, third baseline. It's a good one. The sacrifice is successful. One down here in the fifth. Textbook fundamental softball right there. Sacrifice yourself in your at-bat. Just put that ball down into fair territory and advance that runner over to second base. Let the top of your order try to bring them in. It's a beautiful bunt laid down by Reedy Davenport down that third baseline. Took enough off of it, too, to where Alyssa Brito didn't have a chance to make the play over at second base. And now it looks like we might be seeing a pitching change for the Oklahoma Sooners here with the runner in scoring position. Yeah, we saw Ball warming in the bullpen earlier, but it's going to be Alex Storacco coming on for Nicole May. We'll tell you about the new pitcher next. Nicole May's day is done. She goes four, giving up five hits. Three runs, she's responsible for Houston, who's the runner at second, as Mackenzie Clark will step in to face Alex Storacco. Sirocco coming over a transfer from Michigan to the Sooners this year has that explosive rise ball that we see Mackenzie Clark goes after the very first pitch of this at bat. Got really good late sharp movement up in the zone. You're going to see a heavy dose of pitches up in the zone to Mackenzie Clark. And now this is two days in a row that the Sooners have made the pitching change to bring in Alex Sirocco when it's Mackenzie Clark up at the plate. One on one. Storacco came on yesterday with one out in the sixth inning and got Clark to fly out. Storacco retired the five batters she faced four by fly ball. One and two. And that swing right there is, again, I think another example of why we see Coach Gasso making the pitching change when she does, because Mackenzie Clark and I both share a love of rise balls up in the zone, and we saw her already hack at two of them up in the zone off Storacco in this at-bat. Grounded foul. We'll do the one-two again.
Patty Gasso's team was up 4 nothing, but then the Tigers on the comeback trail. Three-run home run last inning. Tying run at second with one down here in the home half of the fifth. A reminder, Clemson the home team here in game two of the Super Regional. Fly ball, deep to center. It is drifting back. It's at the track. It's at the wall. It is gone. Mackenzie's dad, Brian, loves it. A two-run home run. A one-run Tiger lead in the fifth. What a swing with two strikes, too. This is a low rise. She had hacked at pitches up in the zone earlier in this at-bat. She gets one about belt high, and she can't <laughs> believe it. That ball just carried and carried and carried over the center field wall. What a big time at bat and a clutch swing by Mackenzie Clark in that leadoff spot, knowing they had just made the pitching change. She flew out to center field off of Storocco yesterday, gets a bit more of this one, and drives that one out for a two-run shot to give the Tigers the lead. And now Ali McClesh is hit by a pitch. So she's aboard with one down here in the fifth. We told you earlier about Mackenzie Clark being back here as you take a look at McClush being hit by the pitch. Mackenzie Clark coming here to Oklahoma. She has said earlier this week, if you told five-year-old me I'd be playing in Oklahoma, I would not have believed you. And here she is hitting a two-run home run in the fifth inning against the two-time defending national champions to put her Tigers in front. And Valerie Cagle with a solid line drive to single to center field and the Tigers aren't done here in the fifth. We're seeing the aggressiveness too because they know the direction that all these pitches they're gonna see from Storocco are going to move. Everything's going to have a little bit of upspin to it and they've made very quick adjustments with their barrels getting on top, driving it out of the, into the outfield. Here we go with Valerie Cagle, a pitch on the outside part of the plate. You know that's the area of the plate that she just loves to swing at. Drives that one hard for a line drive base hit to continue this rally for the Tigers. Pitching coach Jen Rocha will step to the circle to talk with her battery and the infield here. A single by Ruskowski. Sacrifice bunt by Davenport. Two run home run for Clark, her 13th of the season. McLesh hit by a pitch, and then Cagle with her first hit of the day and her fourth hit of the Supers. Kirsten Deal out there in the Sooner bullpen getting loose. First time that the Sooners have been playing from behind all postseason and the most runs that the Sooners have allowed all year. See Kinsey Hansen as she steps behind the plate trying to get her fans going, but right now it's the Clemson fans making the most noise. Rightly so. Their team has come from 4 nothing down to go on top 5-4 with two on here in the fifth. Ball one to Caroline Jacobson. Jacobson's one for two today. Doubled and scored in the fourth. Struck out in the second. Seven hits. Nine runs batted in for Jacobson in the NCAA tournament. She's been big. 101. Two and one. Two and two.
Jacobson, one of the three key grad transfers for the Tigers with Miklush and Davenport have fit right into this program and led them here to a second consecutive Supers. That's foul. Continuing to see those rise balls on different locations, different planes from Alex Storacco. Some of them more low in the zone, some up in the zone. But everything, again, having a similar movement and spin to it. Out of play. You just get the feeling, too, that the Tigers are just wanting to be aggressive, even if they have long at-bats, even if they're fouling off a bunch of pitches. They want to make Alex Storacco work out there, force her to make a mistake in the circle because then they're able to capitalize on those rise balls, maybe left a little bit lower into that strike zone. There's that off-speed, too. I'm surprised that... We didn't see that pitch earlier with the way that the Tigers have been so aggressive on the rise. Count is full to Jacobson. Three and two with one down. Bases loaded for the Tigers. All of a sudden, you just feel so much energy coming out of that Clemson dugout, just celebrating quality at bats and having that pass the bat mentality. That was something that they really worked on coming into this weekend, not trying to go up there and get the hero swings is what Coach John Rittman called it. He said that's what they were doing back in that ACC tournament when they got no hit by Cassidy Curd for Duke that they were trying to go up there and get the big time swing rather than just trusting in the process trusting in the game plan and the approach that they had in the at-bat and trusting their teammates on either side of them in the batting order as well. And that's what we're seeing from the Tigers here in this inning to continue this rally in the bottom of the fifth. Bit of a delay here. Logo Leo had stepped out and now Patty Gasso is going to go to the circle. And it looks like she's going to make a pitching change and bring on Kirsten Deal. So a new pitcher coming on for the Sooners, their third of the game, back in a moment. 15 pitches for Alex Storacco, gave up the two-run home run to Clark, so she's charged with one run at the moment, but she is responsible for the three on the bases right now for the Tigers, and a freshman steps into the circle in a huge spot here for the Sooners. This is a big moment for Kirsten Deal. Coming from the left side, she's got that really good curveball, rise ball combination, so a lot of upspin on her pitches, but she's also got that changeup that she's going to throw in there as well, and that's got to be a pitch that you have, have to have a ton of confidence in with the bases loaded, one away, and Clemson trying to continue their rally. Logaleo's had a couple of good at bats here today. She takes ball one from the freshman. Logaleo grounded to third in the second, walked and scored on the more three run home run in the fourth. Two and oh. Ariel Oda running for Valerie Cagle at second. McLesh at third. Jacobson at first with the freshman deal facing Logaleo. One down here in the fifth. Taken all the way here. 3 0, Eric. Not taking that bat off of my shoulder until Kirsten Deal can show me she can throw at least one, maybe even two strikes in there. Not close. Ball four. That brings in a run, and the Tigers 
extend their lead here in Norman. We're just seeing them string together those quality at bats and with each pitch, each at bat, you can hear the crowd for Clemson getting louder and louder and louder in the dugout and these players are just feeding off of that energy. And look at the way that they've adjusted throughout the ball game too. Started off 0 for 6, now 7 for 12 through the rest of this ball game and that's where all of that run production is coming from. There's a strike after the four pitch walk to Logaleo to Maddie Moore. Three run home run it turned the tide of this game in her last at bat. It was four nothing Oklahoma. But then that three run shot on a one two pitch with two outs in the fourth. Gave the Tigers a little bit more than hope in this game. One on one. Gave them momentum. And it is carried over to this inning where the Tigers have plated three more to go on top six four. Back up the middle and knocks off the glove of the pitcher. The flip to first for the out, but a run will score to make it seven to four. Another extremely hard hit ball put in play. You know that Kirsten Deal is going to want to try to bring something into the strike zone, and Maddie Moore is all over this pitch. Actually, a pitch up in the zone that she gets her barrel on top of, drives it right back up the middle, and it deflects off of the glove of Kirsten Deal. Gets away from her enough to allow another Tiger run to come across and extend their lead in the bottom of the, of the fifth inning here. Jen Roach is going to come out to talk to the freshman pitcher as that one came screaming back at her I think maybe there'd be some surprise why would Oklahoma go to the freshman but Kirsten Deal remember in that series with Oklahoma State she got the win in the relief against Oklahoma State fired up her team in the sixth inning finished it off in the seventh when they were losing and gave her team a chance to win which they did and it's a similar position here and if you're the Tigers you a three run lead is nothing against the Oklahoma offense you've got to find a way to chase home a little bit more here with a couple innings left for the Sooners. The big word is taking advantage of opportunities, right? When you've got runners in scoring position, even though it might be with two outs, you've got to try to come away with as many runs as you possibly can because we saw yesterday just how quickly Oklahoma can put up a crooked number. Vieira with a ground ball to second. Jennings on to first to retire the side. But the Tigers bat around and take the lead in the fifth. And it's off the bat of Mackenzie Clark with the go-ahead home run out to center. Her dad loves it. Clemson up 7-4. Oklahoma a win away from the Women's College World Series. A 48-game win streak if they win here. But they are playing from behind for the first time in the NCAA tournament as Clemson looks for their first ever Super Regional win. So their fourth year as a program, their second trip to the Supers, and with a three-run lead as they work here in the top half of the six. Millie Thompson throws strike one to Alyssa Brito. Brito one for two today, homered in the fourth inning, her second of the Super, her first was yesterday. It was off of Millie Thompson as well. Not surprised that Millie Thompson goes with the change at the first pitch of this at bat to get ahead 0-1. Big rip, 0-2. Oklahoma has three home runs today, all solo shots. Back to back to start the game from Coleman and Jennings. Brito went deep with an out in the fourth inning. They manufactured a run after that in the fourth to take a 4-0 lead. But seven unanswered runs by the Tigers have them in front of mighty Oklahoma. Sooners have won 47 in a row, tying Arizona's NTA record for consecutive wins. The 0-2. Soft liner wide of Cagle at first. Mackenzie Clark with the big home run today for the Tigers. Alyssa Brito earlier today with this shot in the fourth. Yeah, back in the fourth inning. This is a really good piece of hitting here. A pitch on the outside part of the plate that she gets that barrel underneath the pitch and drives it out to dead center for a solo shot. And you mentioned the three home runs that Oklahoma has had today, all solo home runs. 
for Clemson, two home runs, and they've manufactured five runs off of those two swings. Line drive, base hit up the middle to start things here in the sixth inning. Second hit of the game for Alyssa Brito. And here comes the crowd. We saw the momentum pick up in just one inning yesterday, and Alyssa Brito knows that they need to get some of that energy and momentum back onto their side. Smokes that one up the middle for a two-strike base hit and immediately turns to the crowd to get them fired up. And the Tigers are going to turn to their third pitcher of the game. As John Rittman stepped out, Valerie Cagle started stepping towards the dugout to trade in her first baseman's glove for a pitcher's glove because she'll be in the circle when we come back to Norman. Tigers started with Brooke McCubbin. She went three and a third. Millie Thompson came on an inning and two thirds. They did what they had to do. They kept this game manageable. They kept Oklahoma as quiet as possible so the Tigers could mount to come back. And now it's set up for their ace to step in the circle. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do as the pitching staff. Just keep the game where it is. Let your offense get an opportunity to put up runs like they have and then bring in Valerie Cagle. And you know exactly what you're going to get when she comes into the circle. High velocity, 70 plus miles an hour with that heavy drop down in the zone. The one element of her pitches that she's added this season has been the changing in speed. She'll throw an off-speed pitch similar to the drop ball, but it's the off-speed rise ball that has really been a difference maker for her so far this year. So Cagle moves from first base to the circle. Madison May will take Cagle's spot at first base. Cagle last weekend in the Clemson Regional, 17 innings, gave up nine hits and four runs. Yesterday, four innings, seven hits, eight runs, seven earned in her 78 pitches. Brito at first. Sanders will step in with nobody out here in the top of the sixth. Right away, brings the heat and gets strike one. Cagle is not the strikeout pitcher she once was. Love to get a ground ball here if you're the Tigers and hope you can turn two. They get the ground ball, but it's wide of third and foul, and it's 0-2. And, and yesterday, this is what Sydney Sanders did in her at bat against a Valerie Cagle. It's a drop ball inside that she gets her barrel out in front, driving that thing out of the yard for a two-run shot in yesterday's ball game. One of the three finalists for National Player of the Year has delivered time and again in the postseason. Vieira with the stop in the circle. Pitching Clemson to this Super Regional at the plate, helping lead the Tigers to this Super Regional. And now trying to pitch them to a win against Oklahoma, the 2-2. Line shot to right, it stays up in the air for Jacobson, turning and looking for the double play, but scampering back is Brito, one down here in the sixth. It's a great piece of hitting there by Sidney Sanders. It just happens to go right to Caroline Jacobson out in right field, throws her hands at this outside drop ball, hits it right on the money, a line drive and a really good catch by Jacobson too to turn around and fire it into first base. But Brito's able to dive in safely. So I have a pinch hitter here for Oklahoma. Alina Torres will hit for Erickson with one down in the sixth. 
Torres, three for six with a couple of runs in the NCAA tournament, was 0 for two yesterday. Back to Kegel, the throw to second for one, and Logaleo holds on to it as she tiptoes over Brito at second. And Brito's going to go back to the bag. Will there be a challenge here for Oklahoma? There was a bit of fancy footwork around that bag there for the Tigers. Yeah, it almost looked like a bit of miscommunication between Matty Moore at second base and Alia Logaleo at shortstop as far as who was going to cover second base when that ball went back to Valerie Cagle. Let's take another look at it here. It looked like she had that left foot on the base when she caught this throw. Well, she was on her way past the bag that she hold on just right enough. There. Yes. yes, I think that that shows us right there that she did get that out at second base. Looked like it on our replay. Patty Gasso, for the moment, is asking for the umpires to get together. A reminder, we're in the sixth inning. This could be an umpire-generated review. A lot of times the coaches will just ask for a conversation and the umpires will just say, let's make sure we've got it right. We'll go to the monitor, check with the replay center, which is in Pittsburgh here for the NCAA tournament. And I think it was because they were both going for that throw, which is what made it look a lot worse in real time. But it's pretty clear to me that her foot's on second base when she catches that ball. Long conversation with our four-member umpiring crew here. And they will, uh, the indication there from our plate umpire, Tracy Laycock, umpire-initiated review here in the sixth inning. I'd imagine this one will be fairly quick from the review, but again. Well, you play the shortstop at a position at an All-American level. Is there anything because Logo Leo comes over the base and into Brito here that would be under review or under question from Gasso in Oklahoma? It looks clearly like there's a force play there, but because Logo Leo then carries over into Brito, is there anything there that could be called? No, I don't think so. Not at all. Because there's think an out. A, it's a clean softball play. There's an out there, and, and Brito's not doing anything to interfere with a possible throw that Logo Leo would have been making over to first base. So this is a clean play. I'd imagine it's going to be a, clean, a pretty quick review, too. I just think because they were both going for that catch, and because Logo Leo kind of hopped out of the base path, that's what made it look maybe not as smooth in real time. Yeah, this is a quick review. You're right, Madison. And the call's upheld. And it's the right move to go to the monitor, just to be sure, because you're talking about with the Tigers, a team whose season is on the line, or Oklahoma, a team that could go to the Women's College World Series with a win here today. And you know just how much Oklahoma likes to celebrate the little things and mm -hmm. how they pick up momentum on just the smallest aspects of the game. And so that right there, you just kind of felt that they were hoping for something to be able to continue to bring the momentum back onto their side because right now it is clearly all Clemson. Two outs for Grace Lyons here in the sixth. One on one. Two and one. Lyons struck out against McCubbin in the second, was hit by a pitch by Thompson in the fourth. Grounded to third, the throw to first, and the Tigers are three outs away from a game three in the Super Regionals after five and a half, seven for Clemson. Game two of the Norman Super Regional, Oklahoma with a win. We'll move on to the Women's College World Series. Clemson with a win will force a game three tomorrow. And right now, Clemson, as they get re ready to bat in the bottom half of the sixth inning, they've got a three-run lead. And it's the Clemson bats coming through with a couple of home runs. Maddie Moore driving this one out for a three-run shot. And then it's Mackenzie Clark, the two-run home run out.
dropped to center field. She could not believe it as she was rounding first base. But it's the Clemson Tigers up by three runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. If you're just joining us, Oklahoma had back-to-back -back home runs in the top half of the first inning. They are the host team, but the visiting team in game two of the Super Regional. It could have been a much bigger inning. Good defensive play, a play at the plate. Got the third out of the inning for the Tigers. Oklahoma scored two more in the fourth. They had a 4 nothing lead, but then Clemson with those three runs in the fourth, the four runs in the fifth. Batting now in the home half of the sixth inning with Ruskowski leading off. She got things started in the fifth inning with a leadoff single. Yeah, and Eric, you even mentioned, too, after that first inning, that big play, that out that was made at the plate just felt like a big play. And I know it was early in the ballgame, but both you and I just had a feeling that that play that Clemson was able to make on the relay into home plate was going to be a big one. And I think we're seeing exactly why. And it was because Clemson used the momentum of that great defensive play and that great stop to try to carry it over to the rest of the game and keep them in the ball game long enough to allow their offense to make adjustments and get runs on the board. Two and two to Ruskowski. One for two, single and a run scored in the fifth inning. We had that feeling, let's be frank, everyone who follows college softball had a feeling that it was set up to be just this landslide, the snowball just rolling down the hill for Oklahoma because that's what they've done all season long. But just two runs in that first inning. The Tigers battling, fighting back and scoring seven unanswered runs. Ruskowski strikes out looking for out number one. It's a good way to bounce back if you're Kirsten Deal. Working this pitch low in the zone, knowing that Ruskowski was the one that started the rally back in the fifth inning, locates this one straight at the knees and gets the strikeout looking. I'll bring up Reedy Davenport. Fly ball out of play for strike one for Davenport, who singled in the third at a sacrifice in the fifth. Three teams already with tickets punched to Oklahoma City. Florida State, Oklahoma State, and earlier today, Stanford. Oklahoma with a chance to join those teams today. The Tigers trying to force a game three tomorrow. Popped up, playable, right side. And put away by Sanders. Two down. Now bring up the star of the show for the moment for the Tigers and Mackenzie Clark. Her two run home run to straight away center field in the fifth inning gave the Tigers the lead over Oklahoma. First time the Sooners have trailed in the NCAA tournament this season. And that put five runs on the board, the most that Oklahoma has given up this season. We're now up to seven. Out of play for strike one. Looking ahead for the Sooners in the top half of the seventh inning, nine, one, and two. Which means Coleman and Jennings will come to the play. Oh, and two. That nine, one, and two is the exact part of the order that started that fifth inning rally for them in yesterday's ball game to be able to bounce back after Clemson put some runs on the board. Started with that bunt single by Riley Boone in the nine spot. The 0-2 pitch from Deal to Clark. I still love seeing the reaction of Mackenzie Clark as she rounded first base when she saw that ball had left the yard. We did joke coming into the Super Regional that we needed to have a Mackenzie Clark camera just on her all the time <laughs> just to see all of the energy that she brings to the field. The one two. 
Popped up, foul ground. Burrito will run out of room off the top of the dugout. One thing with McKenzie, whose nickname is Pi, there were just too many McKenzies on her travel ball team, she told us, and for some reason she blurted out Pi when they were huddled up at one time and the nickname stuck. Well, because she was looking forward to her grandmother's <laughs> pie, and then of course I asked her which kind of pie, and she said strawberry. So that's her favorite kind of pie. That's where she got the pie nickname. The strawberry pie will taste a little bit better after this game if the Tigers can <laughs> pull it out. Clark battling against the freshman deal. Third pitcher used today for Oklahoma. Nicole May started. Alex Duraco followed and now deal the freshman. Trying to keep it a three run game right now as we get closer to the seventh inning. Soft liner, two-third. Brito's got it. It's a one-two-three inning for Deal. Last chance for Oklahoma coming up as we head to the seventh. And you don't say this too often. Last chance for Oklahoma. Down by three as they get set to bat here in the top of the seventh inning. Eric Fried with the Tennessee All-American. Madison Shipman. So many emotional swings. So much drama. And now we get to the seventh inning. It really just has been a back and forth game. It started with the Sooners with those back-to-back -back solo shots to get the game going. But then it was Clemson with the two big home runs. The three-run shot and the two-run shot. And then they were able to capitalize again on more and more base runners. Getting that run total up to seven runs and they've given themselves a three run cushion in the top of the seventh 47 game winning streak on the line a 64 game home winning streak on the line for Oklahoma their last home loss was on leap day in 2021 February 29th 2021 that's how rare it is against North Texas they tied Arizona's NCAA record for consecutive wins yesterday with their victory over the Tigers. That was a 9-2 final. Patty Gasso's team had a 4-0 lead, but the Tigers with those seven unanswered runs, three outs away from a game three tomorrow. Riley Boone with a hot shot foul, and it's one and two. Valerie Cagle did not start. Brooke McCubbin started, followed by Millie Thompson, and now the ace. The presumptive pick for player of the year nationally, Valerie Cagle, an elite two-way player. Misses for a ball, it's two and two. Soft liner back behind first, it's a fair ball. Boone hangs it first. She got things going in the fifth yesterday. Has she started things again here in the seventh today? Yesterday, she was able to do it by laying down the first pitch, bunt down the first baseline. This time, she gets to two strikes. It's an off speed, and she just throws her barrel out at it enough to drop it out into right field. And you could hear the roar from the crowd as she turns to fire up her dugout after that leadoff base hit. And now to the top of the lineup, Jada Coleman, who started this game with a home run. One for three. Ball one. The Big 12 Player of the Year facing the ACC's Player of the Year. Fly ball hit deep to left. It is back and it is at the track. Miklish has it one down. It's a good pitch by Valerie Cagle. 
Jada Coleman aggressive on that drop ball low in the zone, just barely misses it. Fly ball out to left field, and it keeps Riley Boone stranded over at first base. Jerry Jennings, one for three with a home run. Jennings went back to back with Coleman in the first. Then line to third and line to center. She's hit it hard three times this afternoon. One on one. Out of play, it's one and two. Oklahoma has not lost a super regional game at home since 2014. When the Tennessee Lady Vols and Maddie Shipman picked up the win, forcing a game three. Clemson trying to do that here today. The one, two, skipped up. Boone taking no chances at first. Two and two. Good job by Abby Vieira back behind the plate, too, because Valerie Cagle likes to throw the heavy drop. She throws that change up down into the dirt, too, and she scoops that one up to keep it in front of her. Cagle wanted it, didn't get the call. Counts full, three and two. That's the rise ball. She'll throw it on different planes, about 61 miles per hour, moving in a different direction than majority of her pitches. Throws it low here. Just barely low out of the zone. Grounded to third, to second for the force. Holding it is Moore, two down here in the seventh. After watching that close one go by for ball three, Tiare goes after the very next pitch that she sees. Ground ball over to the left side, get the force out at second base, and now two away with Haley Lee up to bat. Lee's 0 for 3. Another good stop by Vieira, ball one. Lee flied out to left in the first, fouled out to first in the third, grounded to first in the fifth. One on one. I wonder if Mackenzie Clark is even breathing in center field right now. <laughs> we know she loves to celebrate Valerie Cagle in the circle. Cagle mostly stoic. Off speed, in there for a strike. Tigers one strike away from a game three. Soft liner to right, it's a base hit. Sooners aren't done yet. The tying run will come to the plate here in the seventh. Down to their final strike in this game, and it's Haley Lee dropping that one out to right field. And just as you feel the energy pick up, Abby Vieira is going to come out and have a quick chat with Valerie Cagle in the circle. Patty Gasso will bring handful of her players together for a conversation just to the left of home plate. Forty seven consecutive wins since their only loss this season, which was to Baylor on February 19th. The Tigers in just their fourth year playing as a program, playing in their second Super Regional, looking for their first ever Super Regional victory. A record crowd packed into Marita Hines Field. 2,127, about as many out beyond left field in Home Run Village.
Kinsey Hansen will step in. One for three today. Eight for 13 in the NCAA tournament. Strike one. And two for a second time, Clemson one strike away from a game two win. Swung on, hit deep to left field. It is back. It is gone. Two at-bats in a row that Oklahoma was down to their final strike. Haley Lee drops a base hit out into right field, and on an 0-2 count, a pitch up and away. Kenzie Hansen pulls this thing. It's a rise ball over the left field wall to tie up this ball game with just one swing of the bat. Clutch at bat after clutch at bat, and that is what we have seen from Oklahoma all season long. And it's Hansen coming through in the biggest moment. Strike one to Brito. Again, Brito can put Oklahoma ahead. It is not a walk-off situation because Oklahoma is the visiting team. So Clemson still has a chance in the seventh, but Kinsey Hansen in a game with so much drama comes through in the most dramatic moments. And on an 0-2 count, too, after watching a pitch go by that she didn't necessarily like the call, thought it was a little bit low, got her to 0-2, shook it off, and went after the very next pitch that she saw. Another 0-2. Grounded wide of third. Haley Lee on a one-two pitch. Had a soft liner to right to keep the Sooners going and bring Hanson to the plate as the tying run and the 0-2 pitch over the wall and left. Her 12th home run of the season, and she now has nine runs batted in in the NCAAs. <laughs> Mackenzie Clark and the Tigers so so close but not done yet one and two now to Brito Brito two for three today had a solo home run in the fourth Singled in the sixth. Two and two. You can tell Kegel being very careful where she places these drop balls to Brito. I've talked about it several times throughout the Super Regional. She has one of those swings that's just tailor-made for those hard drop balls down into the zone. 
We saw the pitch before. Cagle buried the drop ball down into the dirt and then goes way away outside and brings this count even for Brito. Works the count full. Brito hit her 17th home run of the season. Four of the 17 coming in the NCAA tournament. The arrow will go talk to Cagle. Yeah, Jada Coleman outside of the dugout, Alex Storacco outside of the dugout, Riley Boone, Grace Lyons just firing up this crowd. They feed off of the energy and the momentum to be able to come through in those timely moments. Brito slams the bat in celebration for a walk with two down here in the seventh. It's the little things for Oklahoma. The little things lead to big moments. Taking a couple of close pitches, fouling off the ones that you want to go after, having a good long at bat against one of the best pitchers in the nation to extend this inning. Those are the things that you can constantly see the Sooners celebrating throughout a ball game. There's Sidney Sanders who homered off of Cagle yesterday. Ball one. Sanders doubled in the first, was hit by a pitch and scored in the fourth, lined out to right in the sixth. Reedy Davenport with a quick message to Valerie Cagle. Cagle threw 78 pitches yesterday into the 40s now. Pitch number 42 is a strike. Taping up the chest protector for Hansen, that would tell me that Jordy Ball will pitch the bottom of the seventh with that blue tape target. Three and one to Sanders. Out of play. One thing, too, that I've really marveled at from Oklahoma all season long back from when they were playing UCLA in a preseason tournament was their two-strike hitting. They hit four two-strike home runs in that matchup early in the season. Today, they've got two home runs with two-strike counts, four singles, and two hit batters with two-strike counts. And go ahead and add another walk to that total. Interesting, too, Maddie, on that follow-through, Cagle after delivering that pitch, looked right to the Clemson dugout. So you have to wonder how she's feeling right now. Erickson will hit here in the seventh.
Strike one. Yeah, it's interesting, Eric, that you mentioned she looked into the dugout. Her velocity still looks up to me. It looks like she's pumping in there a consistent 70 miles per hour on the drop ball. It's just been a matter of her locating those spots in the strike zone. There's a strike, and it's 0-2. Even that pitch right there, she gets it for a strike, but that's not a usual location that she throws her drop. Usually it's right at the knees, maybe thigh high, and that one you could tell is about belt high, which is exactly the spot that you do not want to put a drop ball. Rounded to short, Logaleo with the flip and holding on to it is Moore to retire the side. Clemson will have a chance to walk things off as we head to the bottom of the seventh, but Oklahoma has done it again. Down to their final strike twice. They come through and they're not used to playing from behind, but what they are used to is everyone in the lineup contributing something and there is just no easy out. So 7-7 seven, seven, as we head to the bottom of the seventh. A reminder for what's at stake. Clemson, if they can come back here after watching Oklahoma score three runs, would have their first super win in program history and it would be the first Oklahoma loss at home in a super regional since 2014. The Sooners, who tied Arizona with their 47th consecutive win, that Arizona record set back in 96-97, trying to set a new record here today and in the process getting to the Women's College World Series for a seventh straight time in what would be the final game here at Marita Hines Stadium because they're moving over to Love's Field next season. But now it's a different ball game. We go from Clemson being so close to a game three tomorrow to a tie tie game and now a tie game a 7-7 game and Jordy Ball now stepping into the circle. Yeah, you're going to bring in the Big 12 pitcher of the year in relief in this ball game. Brand new ball game too. You've got to look at it like it's a 0-0 ball game in the bottom of the seventh inning here for Jordy Ball. Going to come in throwing that really good velocity similar to what we see from Valerie Cagle likes to throw the drop ball to both the sides of the plate. But Eric, you know the pitch that stands out to me for her is the drop ball that she runs low and inside to the righties and low and away to those left handed batters. You see lots of blue tape on the chest protector for Hansen for ball to lock in on. Ball went five and a third yesterday gave up eight hits couple of runs one earned, no walks and six strikeouts. She really had to battle yesterday because Clemson was putting the ball in play. They had some base runners, but by the end of the game, Clemson had left nine on base. New day, new game, and it's a new game here in the seventh after this three run shot by Kinsey Hansen. It's the catcher coming through in an 0-2 count too. This is that off speed rise ball that we talked about with Kegel. So she's taking a bit off of it, throws it up in the zone and the athletic swing by Kinsey Hansen to get around that pitch and drive it with enough power to tie up that ball game. So now to the bottom of the seventh we go. Clemson with an opportunity to walk off Oklahoma here in Norman. Miklas swinging a miss for strike one. 0 for 2 today, grounded to second in the first, fouled out in the fourth, hit by a pitch and scored in the fifth. <laughs> 0 and 2. Looking back at yesterday and Jordy Ball's appearance, I really thought she threw very well in the circle. Remember, there were those uncharacteristic defensive miscues by Oklahoma that led to some of those runs for Clemson. But I thought she got some huge strikeouts with runners in scoring position that really halted the momentum for Clemson in yesterday's ball game. Miklish leading off 
That means Valerie Cagle is on deck. After giving up the three-run shot, hoping to have an opportunity for the walk-off here for the Tigers. Slapped, foul. Cagle steps out to hand the bat to her teammate, who's leading off here in the seventh. Three runs in the fourth, four runs in the fifth. Deal worked a one, two, three inning in the sixth for Oklahoma. Getting to ball here in the seventh. Another one, two. Fly ball, shallow center. Coleman, one away. Let's see how Ball approaches Cagle here today because Cagle had some very good at bats against Jordy Ball yesterday. Three hits and three appearances. I was going to say went three for three off of her yesterday. All to the left side of the field, too. Jordy Ball really worked the drop ball down and away to Cagle. And right on cue, pitching coach Jen Rocha is going to come out and have a conversation with her battery. I'd imagine a lot of this has to do with the strategy on how you're going to f approach facing Valerie Cagle. And this is what she did yesterday. Hit this one hard underneath the glove of Grace Lyons and then gets another pitch outside, drops that one out into center field, and yet another pitch that she's able to drop out to left field. Would not be surprised if they change the game plan here and maybe try to work some of those drop balls low and inside to Cagle just to give her something different. Long conversation here with Rocha in the circle. Gasso with her infielders. Quicker conversation between Cagle and John Rittman. But John Rittman, what can you tell Valerie Cagle, the likely National Player of the Year, who came in hitting 474, who has 19 home runs, who has 57 runs batted in, and would love to end it right here with one swing of the bat. Big cut, strike one. Cagle struck out facing May in the first. Flight out against May in the fourth. Singleton scored in the fifth against Toraco. Line drive, foul. It's 0 and 2. One and two. It's a good spot, 0-2 spot. Drop ball low and outside. I know everybody wants it, including the Sooner dugout wants that one called for a strike. Not far outside, but that's a good 0-2 pitch. Cagle, the ACC Player of the Year for a second time in her career. Battled shoulder problem last year that required surgery. Her numbers have skyrocketed this year. The one-two.
Still trying to throw those pitches way outside. Jordy Ball knows that, that if she's going to miss in that location, you cannot miss over the plate. You've got to miss outside of the zone. Good couple of takes there, too, by Cagle. From 0 2 to 3 2. Just got a piece. Anxious moments for Oklahoma fans because their team is not the home team. Clemson's the home team. So it's a walk off situation for the Tigers and not their Sooners. Another 3 2 from Ball. That strikeout right there is all about the setup pitches. Getting Valerie Cagle thinking you're going to continue to work further and further outside. And then you cut up and inside with the rise ball to get the big swing and miss. And a big second out in this inning. Ball wins the battle with Cagle. Two down here in the bottom half of the seventh. And that'll bring up Caroline Jacobson. Strike one. Jacobson one for two. Struck out in the second, doubled and scored in the fourth, walked in the fifth. It was Jacobson yesterday that hit that two RBI double down that left field line off of Jordy Ball. Pitch low in the zone. Practically straight on the left field foul line. Looks like Brito's hugging that line a little bit closer than we saw her yesterday over at third base. One one. One and two. Foul ball. I think he's using his catch he just made in the stands to try to fire Man, up he the was, Sooners. Well, he was the guy, <laughs> one of those, one of hundreds, firing up the crowd. And then, <laughs> as you say, the ball's going to find you. Yes, that, that is true. <laughs> if we find you, the ball will find you. We'll do the one two again. Tiger fans saw Oklahoma celebrate two home runs when this game was just a couple of minutes old. Back-to-back -back home runs by Coleman and Jennings started the game. But the Tigers hung with it. Even though they were down 4-0, they led 7-4 before Oklahoma tied it at 7. 2-2 two two to Jacobson. It's really been back and forth all game long. Both teams throwing punches. The three solo shots for Oklahoma, and then the big blast by Kinsey Hansen, who we see back behind the plate to tie this ball game up in the top of the seventh inning. Popped up, foul ground, and it is just out of play. 
Heading into the dugout. Hang on a second. Sanders comes away with it. Umpires are having a conversation. There are two openings in front of the dugouts here, and Sanders with those Clemson players getting out of the way. Yeah, that's a catch. That's a catch all the that way. That is a catch. How about the defense from the top defensive team in the country? We go to the eighth, tied at seven. Well, we're back in Norman. The seventh inning isn't officially over yet because there is a replay review for that final play made by Sydney Sanders as she tumbled into the Clemson dugout for what appears to be the third and final out of the seventh inning. To me, it looks like a clear catch. I think you even have some interference from the Clemson players being in the field of play when Sydney Sanders was going over there to make that catch. But both of her feet are down on the turf when she catches that ball. So to me, it looks like a catch. You had asked John Rittman before the game because we were curious about the openings there in case something like that happened. And he was told that as long as you have your feet, a full foot isn't on that concrete slab. You can have a piece of it, but not the full foot. And she was before that concrete yes, slab yeah. leading to the dugout steps. Yeah, to me, both of her feet look like they're on this turf. And she actually runs into the Clemson players, too, and is still able to come away with the catch. The question is, did she have it? <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm going through a football review here, but does she finish the catch as she goes down? You can see her throwing hand was trying to hold on yeah, to I the padding, got it. and I don't think it came out and popped back in. Well, she's celebrating like she has it. And now after the review, it is upheld. <laughs> what a catch by Sanders. Top team in the country in fielding percentage. 988 coming in. 16 total errors on the season. And for Oklahoma, this is game number 57. That catch just absolutely incredible, though, to be able to lock in, knowing that you're running into the opponent's dugout, still come away with the catch. Again, little things like that, a big play defensively, is something that the Sooners are going to use to try to continue to build that momentum in this ball game. Seven, seven, our scores. We go to the top half of the eighth inning. Last time that Oklahoma lost a home game in the Super Regional, that's Madison Shipman leading the Tennessee Lady Vols onto the field, and she would help lead them to a win in game two of that best of three series, always with the game face on, Maddie. Always Did you ever smile? Always had the game face, a little <laughs> bit of sparkles in my hair. That's about all you're going to get as far as a smile out of me on the field. All business, Shipman all got all it business. done. That's the last time <laughs> that Oklahoma lost a Super Regional at home as 2014 to the Lady Vols. I won't say what happened in game three of that series out of respect to my broadcast partner. I appreciate but that. But you, you can make a guess. <laughs> but it's been a long time. They've won 64 straight games at home, 47 games in a row overall. And this is a team that knows how to put together winning streaks. They've had a 41 game winning streak that ended in 2019 a 40 game winning streak that ended in 2022 another 40 game winning streak that ended in 2021 this 47 game winning streak a program record it ties arizona's ncaa record a win today will set a new record as we head to the eighth here in norman and now arizona's record spanned across two seasons correct. right that was 96 and 97 correct and of course, the Sooners doing it here in just one season here in 2023. On to extra innings we go. It's an elimination game for Clemson. Oklahoma wins. They go on to the Women's College World Series. And Cagle out there to work the eight. You saw it's the second extra inning game of the season for Oklahoma. You got to go back to game two of the season, February 9th, when they knocked off Liberty 1-0 in eight innings. Clemson 2-0 in extra inning affairs.
One and two, the count to Grace Lyons leading off for Oklahoma here in the top half of the eighth inning. Lyons 0 for 2, was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Two and two. Ground ball to Logaleo at short on the first to May. One away as Lyons is retired. All eyes really on Valerie Cagle here because she hasn't left the field. She's in the lineup. She obviously hits for herself when she stays in there at pitcher. We saw that matchup with Jordy Ball last inning. Temperature just above 80 degrees, a little bit of humidity. She worked hard yesterday, and she's got to dig deep here against Oklahoma she today. Did, she did throw a lot of innings in that regional, too. And yes. She said she was waiting to see how her body responded on the Monday after regionals, and she said that she was really pleasantly surprised with how she felt after throwing so many innings. I believe she got up to 17 innings that she threw in that regional. Correct. I'd imagine with the season on the line here, she's ready to go. Riley Boone offers at it, down in the count, 0-2. Boone let off the single, seventh with a single when she was forced out at second. Clemson had two outs in the seventh inning, a three-run lead. Oklahoma was down to their final strike twice. Haley Lee on a one-two pitch, had a two-out single to keep the game going. And then Kinsey Hansen on an 0-2 pitch hit a three-run home run to tie things up at seven. Boone rolls it over to second, hops up on Moore, who handles it. Two down. It was interesting last inning, too, and we talk about how good and deep this Oklahoma lineup is, but when Cagle got through Coleman, who flied out to left, and then got Jennings to ground out, you just had the feeling you got through those top two players, but it is not over. You've got Haley Lee, you've got Kinsey Hansen. Brito and Sanders. But here is Coleman with two down in the eighth. There's just so many batters in this offense, too, that have strengths in different areas of the zone. And I think Valerie Cagle went a lot to the off speed rise early in that inning. And then after Haley Lee kind of dropped one out into right field, went back to it on Kinsey Hansen. And that's a completely opposite adjustment from what you would typically do to face the drop ball that you see, the heavy drop ball, for her to be able to throw that 62 mile an hour rise ball up in the zone, a completely different barrel angle. Comes inside for a ball, it's two and one. And the fact that they're able to make those adjustments too on two strikes makes it even more impressive that Oklahoma was able to come back in this ball game in the seventh. Pitch number 60 for Kegel in relief. In there for a strike, and it's two and two. Coleman hit her 16th home run of the season, leading things off for the Sooners. One for four today. Soft liner. Glock! What a grab by May at first! Show that glove work. Madison May to retire the side. The first baseman on both sides, their defense has been spectacular. We saw that play by Sidney Sanders, but how about Madison May diving into the three, four hole for the third out of the inning and Clemson's gonna come up with the game on the line. Already three teams with their tickets punched. Oklahoma City, Florida State, and Oklahoma State did it last night. Stanford did it this morning, taking down Duke in two games. Stanford will take on the winner of this regional at the Women's College World Series, which begins at noon on Thursday. At the rate we're going, we may send some other teams to Oklahoma City before our game here in Norman is done. Have you given thought to that at all, Madison? We are <laughs> it, it, three hours true. and 20 minutes into this game as we play in the bottom half of the eighth. And it's a ground ball up the middle. Grace Lyons to her left, throwing the first in time, one away.
What were we saying about defense from the first baseman? You knew a shortstop had to get in on this action. Grace Lyons having to run a long way up the middle. Look at the way that she's able to just drop her arm angle down so low because she knows she doesn't have time to completely turn her hips to make that throw over to first base. So it's a John, great play by the shortstop there. Yeah, John Rittman has come down and he's kind of sheepishly asking, he's like, well, can we just take a look at it? I think he knows that Logoleo is out at first and Pittsburgh's probably already started to look at this one and should be a pretty quick review. But if you're John Rittman, why not? You never, ever know. And it's close. It's close, but remember the umpires and everybody in review is going to be looking for that leather closing around the, the ball. That's what's going to initiate a catch in their mind when they're looking at this review. And to me, it looks like that leather starts to move right there, right before Logaleo gets that foot on the bag. I must say, it is close. <laughs> it is worth the review. Again, it's the snapping of the glove, as Maddie mentions, that they're looking for, and the call is upheld. So one down as Lions showing why she's the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year for a third consecutive year. A lot of reviews in this game. Our umpires are getting their steps in, going over <laughs> to the third base dugout over there. You're getting your standing in because you're so excited you can't sit still. You know, the defense, I just pop up out of my chair every <laughs> single time. So now I'm thinking I might just stand the rest of the time. Wise choice. Here's Maddie Moore. Moore came through in the clutch in the fourth inning. It was a 4 nothing Oklahoma lead. Two on with two out for Moore, and she took a 1-2 pitch out for her 11th home run of the season. That started to turn the tide for Clemson. They followed with four in the fifth to take a 7-4 lead before Hanson's heroics in the top of the seventh. 0-2 oh, to Moore. Moore's one for three today. Remember, she had a hard hit ball back to the pitcher in the fifth that turned into an out. But if that gets through, Clemson gets some much needed insurance. As it was, that three runs was not enough as Hansen had the three run shot. That's up high for a ball. It's one and two. Yeah, we had talked about it back in that fifth inning that you just got the feeling that since Clemson still had runners on board, they had an opportunity to pile more and more runs on. Because no lead is safe, as we have seen, against the Oklahoma Sooners. Two down. Second strikeout for Jordy Ball, her eighth of the Super. She's got some really good velocity on her pitches this afternoon. Starts her off with a couple of drop balls and then goes with the rise ball, getting completely underneath that pitch as she releases it to get the upspin. Good location to right underneath the hands for a strikeout for the second out. Abby Vieira is one for three. Strike one. Vieira missed 13 games at the close of the regular season with an arm injury. Returned for the Clemson Regional. Five hits in the NCAA tournament. The 0-1. Out of play, it's 0-2. Aviera took a Donnie Goldborn 70 mile an hour fastball straight to the forearm back in April, April 11th. Got back into the lineup this past weekend in the regionals. She's been big already. We've seen back behind the plate blocking up, blocking up a lot of pitches. Also what she brings offensively has been big for the Tigers this season. Ground ball to second on the short hop. It's Jennings on the first, a one, two, three inning again for Jordy Ball. And we head to the ninth 7-7 game.
long ball here at Super Regional Saturday, and it's been the long ball that's been in action all game long from the start. Back-to-back -back solo shots from the Sooners. Alyssa Brito jumping in on the action as well. Then a couple of nice defensive plays by Clemson, able to capitalize, and then it was Maddie Moore with the three-run shot to get them on the board. And how about Mackenzie Clark with the two-run shot out to center field? Her dad, Brian, absolutely loves that one. Clemson was able to tack on a few more and then down to their final strike. Kinsey Hansen with a three-run blast to tie up this ball game as now we're headed into the top of the ninth inning tied 7-7. Clemson in a must-win situation, trying to force a game three tomorrow with a spot in Oklahoma City on the line. An Oklahoma win here today ends this Super Regional and sends the Sooners back to the Women's College World Series where they've won the last two national championships. And a ball is crushed to center field and Oklahoma is on top of the ninth inning. Tiari Jennings. The fifth home run of the game for Oklahoma. The fourth solo shot today for the Sooners. And it's T.R.A. Jennings. Perfect swing, gets her hands inside of this pitch. It's an inside drop ball, and she's able to hit it out to dead center, almost to our cameraman in center field. Give the Sooners the 8-7 lead in the top of the, the ninth inning, excuse me. Jennings with her second home run of the game, 16 this season, and it looks like that's going to be the final pitch for Valerie Cagle. The OU alumni love it out there. Reagan Spencer comes on. She'll be the fourth pitcher for the Tigers as Oklahoma leads it in the ninth. No, Valerie Cagle done in the circle, but not done in the field. She moves over to first base, and Reagan Spencer is the fourth pitcher used by Clemson here today. Reagan Spencer going to come in in relief in this ball game. Primarily works down in the zone. Good example we just saw there. A lot of downward movement that she'll throw to both sides of the plate. Does have a changeup as well. Throws about in the mid 60s, but her job here is to try to keep the ball down, keep them in the park, and keep your team in this ball game. Spencer threw one inning against Auburn in the Clemson Regional. Working here to Haley Lee. Two and one. Everybody loves the home runs, but do not forget the bloop single by Haley Lee with two down on a one-two pitch in the top of the seventh that set the stage for Hanson's heroics on an 0-2 pitch. Just that pass the bat mentality doesn't always have to be pretty. You just get enough barrel on it to extend the ball game. Three and two. Mackenzie Clark hit the two run home run in the fifth to put the Tigers on top. She is due up third in the bottom half of the ninth for the Tigers. Ball four to Lee. She's aboard with nobody out here in the ninth. A hero's welcome for Kinsey Hansen. Ball one from Spencer. Hansen singled in the first, lined to third in the fourth. Popped out the second in the fifth, then hit that three-run home run with two outs in the seventh that tied the game at seven. This one is hit out to left field. Miklesh makes the play.
The defense all over the field today has been outstanding. Ali Miklish having to run a long way for this one. Lays it all out on the line, goes for it, immediately spins a good spin move there too to make <laughs> sure that there wasn't anybody advancing to second base. What a great grab by her. Here's Brito who has Homer today. Ball one. Hit a solo shot in the fourth, which put Oklahoma on top 3-0. Sooners would lead 4-0 before the Tiger comeback. Ground ball to third. They get the force at second. The turn to first in time. Double play turned by the Tigers. And now last chance for Clemson. Down a run as we head to the bottom of the ninth. All right, Matt, Barry Switzer is going to stay to the very end. Marita Hines is going to stay to the very end, although I don't know if she could bear to watch right now. <laughs> Her beloved Sooners have been in a battle here today, but for the moment, Tiari Jennings, one of many heroes for Oklahoma. She has put the Sooners on top, 8-7, as Clemson bats in the bottom half of the ninth inning against Jordy Ball. Jaden Ruskowski leading off, one for three today, singled and scored in the fifth inning. Tiger set nine to the plate in that fifth inning, scoring four to go on top of mighty Oklahoma, seven to four. Sooners down to their final strike twice, tied it in the seventh, and then they go ahead in the ninth. Oh, and two. Oklahoma pitching has retired 10 straight Clemson hitters, and Ball has retired all six she has faced. Checked her swing, it's one and two. Couple of strikeouts mixed in there too for Jordy Ball. Typically when we're writing strikeouts, it's on that drop ball that she gets so many swings and misses on. But so far, both strikeouts have come via the rise ball. She's at great command. You saw of the 32 pitches, 24 for strikes. The one, two, two, Ruskowski. Redshirt freshman, did not play a season ago. Batting here against the two-time defending national champions, Oklahoma, in extra innings. Another one-two from Jordy Ball. One away. After seeing a bunch of rise balls to start off the at-bat, what does Jordy Ball go to when she needs a strike? She goes to the drop ball. Third strikeout for her on the afternoon, and it's one looking to start off the bottom of the ninth inning. Reedy Davenport, one for two, singled in the third, sacrificed in the fifth, popped out in the sixth. Ground ball to seconds. Jennings to first. Oklahoma now one out away from a return trip. It's Oklahoma City. Strike one to Mackenzie Clark. One for four today, had the two-run home run in the four-run fifth inning.
101. Kenzie's dad, Brian. Fly ball, shallow center, diving attempt out of the reach of Coleman. And Clark is aboard with two down with the base hit. You can hear Jada Coleman saying, I'm going to get the next one. She was so close to coming up with a phenomenal grab. Everybody going for this ball. But it's Jada Coleman who's the closest to it, just barely out of her reach. And a base hit with two away for Mackenzie Clark to extend the ball game. Here's Allie Miklish. Ball one. Can the Tigers get to Cagle? Who's on deck? One on one. <laughs> Tigers down to their final strike. Fly ball, center field. Drifting back is Coleman, and Oklahoma survives, and they advance to the Women's College World Series. So much on the line in this ball game for Oklahoma. The win streak, being able to advance to Oklahoma City for the Women's College World Series, and they were able to battle back, comeback fashion. Not a spot that this team has been in very often this year, but they were able to come back down to their final strike. And it was Kinsey Hansen with that big three run shot to tie up the ball game. Jordy Ball coming in relief. T.R.A. Jennings with the go-ahead solo shot in the ninth. A complete team effort and a huge comeback win to send this team to Oklahoma City. Saw the extra moment, Patty Gasso with Mackenzie Clark and a hug, and then the two head coaches embrace as the teams gather around the circle for a final moment together. Down to their final strike twice. It's a seventh straight trip to the Women's College World Series for the Oklahoma Sooners. The two-time defending national champions punch their tickets. And the coaches still together because that was entertainment for us, nerve-wracking for them, but it was 
something special here in Norman, and they know it, and we know it. What an incredible way, too, to end what could be the final game, postseason game, played here at Marita Hines Field, too, in comeback fashion. The Sooner Magic, I believe, was the chant that the fans were chanting after that hit by Kenzie Hansen. So many great memories have too, happened on this field. Too many for them to yes. list off and, and mention. However, I think they will always remember the time they set a new <laughs> NCAA record for consecutive wins because it came and come from behind fashion and now the tradition here in Norman. They're done here at this field for good when it comes to NCAA tournament time. They'll take off that panel and bring it home as they head to their home away from home, Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. I think it helps if you have the veterans at the front who know how to pull this wall panel off. <laughs> and maybe that photographer could offer a push as well. A little well. assist. <laughs> a little assist from the fans. Trying to wedge oh, that thing off of the wall. From, we yeah, go. well, we got a, a car jack or something out there as well. Here it comes. Like, we haven't had enough drama here today. They're building the drama for this ceremonial removing of the panel in the outfield. There it is. And the team will bring it home. Grace Lyons at the very front there, the captain with the biggest smile at all. She told us as a freshman, she had no idea what was going on. Why weren't we running out to the field and what are we doing? And now she's the one who's leading the team. It's at the plate. <laughs> Well, they're covering home plate, but we know what happened there in the seventh inning as we bring you the Capital One rewarding performance down to their final strike. Kinsey Hansen at the plate, and she came through. An 0-2 pitch, an off-speed rise ball outside, up and away, and she gets her barrel around it. The biggest swing of the season came off of the bat of Kinsey Hansen to tie up this ball game in the top of the seventh inning. So Oklahoma celebrates. Meanwhile, Clemson gathering out in right field. Congratulations to the Tigers. They did what few teams have been unable to do, and that is put a real scare into Oklahoma. They came so close to forcing a game three, but John Rittman and his team again, just their fourth season on the field. Came so close to knocking off number one. But the season comes to a close now for the Tigers. 49 and 12 will be their final record. They competed and fought every single pitch, put up more runs on the Sooners today than any other team has been able to do all season long. But it was the bats and the defense and the pitching that came through for the Sooners today to get them that win and a trip to OKC. Clemson was trailing 4 nothing before they got the three-run home run from Maddie Moore to make it a 4-3 game. Clark had the two-run home run in that four-run fifth inning, and Clemson led Oklahoma 7-4. The 47-game winning streak was on the line as Clemson, facing elimination, had that three-run lead with two outs in the seventh inning. But Oklahoma, number one for a reason. They come back with the Hanson three-run home run. They send eight to the plate in the seventh. And then Tiari Jennings with the go-ahead home run that turns out to be the game winner in the ninth as Oklahoma wins it by a final score of eight to seven. And their head coach, Patty Gasso,
has the headset on. We've given her just a moment to try to gather her thoughts, but I think you're going to need longer than a moment to get your thoughts together after what was just a fantastic bit of theater for all us softball fans. How did it feel for you and your team to battle through uh, with Clemson? Yeah, uh, it was a battle. We needed it. Uh, the way these guys respond. They're great. Um, <clears throat> I think everybody expects that we should always win. The amount of pressure is pretty insurmountable, and they keep standing up to it. Um, Jordy was a star. Pitchers were great. Um, Mr. Gasso, you're in my shot. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's just new heroes all the time, and it's just such a fun part, to, you know, so fun to be a part of them, and they respond to us as coaches. They practice like crazy. Um, I'm looking at Marita Hines on this field. What better way to walk away than with something like this? It's a come from behind, gritty, hard fought, and I just give all the credit to, to Clemson for just giving us this battle and just all the glory to God for blessing this team and the staff tremendously. And coach, when we talked to you before the Super Regional, you said that there were so many memories made on this field that you couldn't just pick one, but I'd imagine that you. hit by Kinsey Hansen is gonna shoot its way to you the top of the list. Are, I mean, we yes. talk about the resilience of this team and having to deal with the pressure, but for your team to come through down to their final strike, and Hansen is somebody that's dealt with injuries, how big and how exciting was that for you to see her come through in that moment? Yeah, I, she's exhausted. This team is exhausted. Both teams are exhausted. Hansen is on the bench just trying to get up after, you know, each inning. And T she ran that ball hard. Tiare did the same thing. We're, we were really running low on energy. But you are 100% correct. This is going to be the most lasting memory. Uh, will be the last one, which is the one that I'll probably remember the most just because it just happened. But uh, the cr crowd was great. Incredible environment. Clemson fans were great their first class organization and John Rittman just does such a great job with them. It was just a hard fought super regional. Your team knew what you wanted for your birthday. So give them credit for that, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> you can't well, ask for more than that. Happy birthday. Thank Congratulations. You guys. Thanks and best for being of luck here. Appreciate in Oklahoma it. City. Thank you guys. How much to say after that? Patty Gasso's reaction telling you the story. The pressure is intense. The expectations high and pushed to the limit, they delivered down to their final strike twice. They came through and got the win. 8-7 the final on to Oklahoma City for the Sooners. For Maddie Shipman and our crew, I'm Eric Fried. Thanks for being with us. Let's get you to Salt Lake City.